And now, 2K Sports, the people that brought you WWE 2K19. And with footage taken from the PlayStation 4 and Steam variations of said game, this is XPWL Sabo Beach Slam Fest! Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Sonal Beach, Ontario. I am your commentator, Mark Wondersham, and we are here live in Sonal Beach. Don't believe that teleprompter. That guy just got fired. We've got a big star-studded amount of, of matches tonight. Every title's on the line. We've also got guest matches, starting with this one from the YWL. It's Super Heavyweight Championship on the line as Ryuji Sauta looks to take the title from Edward. After that, we've got ourselves a Triple Threat Extreme Rules brought to you by CAW. We have Feeding Frenzy, Nurse Banshee, and of course, Dusty Notes, the wife of Stone Cold True Blue. We've also got some extra surprises from organizations that haven't been here yet, as well as the XPWL Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament. You see the participants on the screen. We will be having this tournament over the course of the evening, as well as every single championship on the line. Of course, we can't go without the Women's Hardcore Championship. In a Carpenter's Wet Dream Match, we have Rara Fruit, Apple Pills, both challenging the champion to see if they can dethrone her. After that, the XPWL Super Heavyweight Championship will be decided as Big Tankatosh locks up with the War Machine. After that, we have another wonderful championship, an XPWL Cruiserweight Championship match in the Prison Yard Riot match. We have Diablo Hermoso, the Great Oni, El Bastardo Boracho, the Yellow Signal Scarab, Czar Vulcan, and Little Pistol Starter. After that, the XPWL Shooting Star Championship on the line as the inverted paper cut looks to win the Shooting Star Championship for a third time, but she has to defeat the champion, Hannibal Farrell, the Flying Puma. After that, the XPWL International Championship is up for grabs as Texan Gamer 13 battles illustrious Eric Anderson for a chance to hold the gold again. And of course, our main event of the evening tonight, we've got ourselves a special feature, a double main event after this match will be the last one on the list as we have the XPWL World Championship on the line as Roberman takes on Junior Dragon. And of course, the big highlight of the entire evening, that being the Realm of Shadows match, which we know is coming very, very soon. At the very end of the show, we have no idea what to expect, ladies and gentlemen. That being said, we should head down to ringside. I would be doing the opening contest, but you see, tonight we're doing the Steam Division first, which means i got to get my butt out there. And on top of that, I'm going to welcome to the commentary table, YWL commentator, Jim Johnson. Wait, 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 I'm coming back out here? Oh, wait, wait, okay, fine, fine, fine. What exactly? Oh. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one finals for the XPWL Internet Championship. Remind me again why we keep hiring that lady? Or why she keeps showing up? Oh, hi, Mark. Eh, it doesn't matter either way. Hello, everybody. My name is James Jim Johnson of the YWL, and it looks like the XPWL is asking me to provide for a match. And here comes dear old Mark Wondersham, the elite commentator of the XPWL, and seems to be competitor for the Steam Division. This is going to be a rather interesting match to see. Last time these two fought was like a few months back, and it ended horribly for Mark. Either way, Mark Wondersham looking to try to strike gold here in the Steam Division in the form of the XPWL Internet Championship. I'm pretty sure it's been a while since Mark even held gold in the XPWL. The former XPWL competitor turned XPWL commentator, the voice of the XPWL. And dear old personal friend of mine, he owes me five bucks after this. Either way, let's just get moving to the match already. Get the medic out here. 
There he comes. The practically unstoppable XPWL Internet Champion himself. The Blue Medic of the IWF. And the XPWL main roster as well. And the XPWL medical staff. And thank God we have a different medic in the YWL, but he's still scary as all hell. Nevertheless, the blue medic ready for action here tonight. And it looks like he's going to try to take out Mark Wondersham again. We're going to need to prepare some ice for Mark's nuts after this. And medic posing into the crowd. He's looking ready to defend his XPWL Internet Championship. Get the shot of the belt, please. There we go. There's the belt. Now let's get going. Let's start the match. Introducing the challenger from Kitchener, Ontario, Canada. He is the voice of the XPWL, the elite commentator. This is Mark Wondershare. And his opponent, representing the IWF and the XPWL medical staff from Stuttgart, Germany. He is the XPWL Internet Champion. This is the Blue Medic. This is going to be one hell of a fight. I'm pretty sure this is probably going to be the biggest fight in Mark Wondershame's career. And nevertheless, the Internet Championship on the line, his second shot at the title in a little while. Let's just hope he doesn't have to go through the same experience as what happened last time with the Medic. But with what the Medic is capable of, I highly doubt it. The bell is rung and here we go. And, oh, looks like we're going to start off with a body slam in the Mikinoku driver from Mark Wondersham and Medic already kicked out. Mark going crazy right now, and oh, went for an overhead belly to belly, but Medic breaking the eyes, and DDT! The Medic now in control of this match, and Irish whip to the ropes, what is he gonna go for here? Oh, ducks underneath, though, went for a drop kick, but oh, Mark jumping over that drop kick like it was nothing. And Medic picking Mark up by the hair, and oh, into the turnbuckle. Went for a punch, but countered by Mark into the corner. And now Mark with a punch of his own. And another one, and a kick! Oh, but Medic with another kick to his, of his own to Mark's face. And oh, shoulder tackle! Mark is going crazy right now, but jawbreaker from the Medic. Arm drag. And Mark, you gotta bet, he's looking to try to win the championship this time! And oh, that's a hard shot. A hard shot from the medic to Mark. I'm pretty sure Mark's chest ain't gonna feel great. And no oh, jawbreaker. And oh, oh counter. What the oh trip from Mark Wondersham. The man is completely agile. And uh oh, oh another hard shot. Medic sure loves his chops. Ooh. Jawbreaker and Medic with an elbow to the counter and a forearm shot. Medic now in control. Stomp on the Mark Wondersham and oh, a waist lock as he's rolling, trying to wear down Mark. Mark is really in trouble right now. And, okay. Oh, what's going on here? And, oh, Mark tripping the Medic and the Medic rolling out of the ring behind the ropes. And Mark trying to get the fans behind him. And what's going on here? Oh! Sending Medic to the outside. No one for a kick to the space, but oh, leg sweep! Ooh! That's gotta hurt. And last time I think these two were locked up, they were inside a cage or something. Or maybe that was between Mark and Deadpool, I can't remember. And oh! 
jumping clothesline. That was a stiff one, but he at least knocked Medic down. And Mark with a shoulder tackle. And, no, oh, I didn't do much, though, as the Medic got out with a leg sweep. And, no, oh, punch to the face of the shoulder tackle from Mark Wondersham again. And what is he going to do here now? Oh, look at this, the agility of Mark Wondersham. Oh, tripping the Medic now. And going for a pin. One, two, and Mark only got a two count. Gonna go for it now. Oh, looks like he's gonna set up for that super kick. And is he gonna hit it? Yes, he does! The super kick hits. And will he win it? One, two. We have a new internet champion! Mark Wondersham with the victory. Congratulations, Mark! Mark Wondersham with the sweet shit music, and it was all over. There was a Mick Noku driver body slam from Mark a little bit ago. There's that striking combination. The insane agility from Mark Wondersham amazes me. But that only got him two. There's the super kick. And that's what led him to become the internet champion. What an interesting showing. Mark still got it. Here is your winner and the new XPWL internet champion. Mark Wondersham! Mark Wondersham finally collected the title after so long. And I'm sure he's gonna be gloating about it in the announce table once he gets once he gets back here. Either way, thank you guys in the XBWL for letting me commentate for this match. I am James Jim Johnson, and we'll be seeing you in the YWL. Now I have to get out of here. Uh, why do I always get drugged for certain occasions like this? Ow! Okay, okay! Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one followers for the YWL Super Heavyweight Championship! Hello everybody, my name is James Jim Johnson from the YWL and we proudly give you a match from the YWL and this time it's going to be from the super heavyweights as Ryushi Sauta looks to take back the title that he lost from Edward back at Junkyard Thursday one of the old XPWL shows that we brought back from the, to the YWL and Ryushi Sauta walked in as super heavyweight champion but didn't walk out it and now he wants to take that aggression out again and this time he's going to be doing it at Sabo Beach Slam Fest, where he walked in as tag team champions with Baba Black Sheep, I believe it was. But Ryuji Sauta going under the Alien Sheep gimmick, which I'm kind of surprised he's decided to keep. I thought ever since he joined the YWL, I thought he would keep, uh, get back to keep the past behind. But. I guess Ryuji Sauta wanted him to keep the memories coming. I mean, we have heard rumors that he was talking with Twyla Meta a long time ago, or a few months back. But I don't know the full story behind it. Either way, Ryuji Sauta looking to try to take back the Super Heavyweight Championship that he lost to this man right here. Edward from the Pro Wrestling Zone. The pits of hell call for Edward. The aggression of violence, the silence of doomsday. Those two combinations make Edward. Edward has been in the ring with violence and doomsday before. He's lost to them before, but he's also taken the beating to them. And he looks to do the same thing with Ryuji Sauta again. Both Ryuji and Edward have had numerous clashes before. They had big matches at Junkyard Thursday and TakeOver Cantalot, or Equestria. And Edward lost the first match. But he revived that loss by recapturing the Super Heavyweight Championship back at Junkyard Thursday after issuing his rematch clause. 
Well, it looks like Ryuji is doing the same thing here tonight, but will he recapture the Super Heavyweight title? I guess we're going to find out right now. This can be intense. Introducing the challenger from Sacramento, California. He is the former ailing sheep. He is Ryuji Sota. And his opponent from the pits of hell. He is the YWL Super Heavyweight Champion and representing the Pro Wrestling Zone. This is... Edward! And Edward looking at the crowd as he hands his championship off to the referee. Ryuji, this was his first actual pay-per-view that he ever walked into. But let's see if he can walk out as champion. And he's adjusting his pants, I think. And Edward looking at Ryuji. And oh, went for a clothesline as the bell rang, but oh, no, oh, gut wrench as Ryuji ran after him. And Edward outsmarting the ailing sheep. And oh, counter into DDT. And as I've mentioned before, Ryuji and Edward have had several clashes before in the YWL. Ryuji defeating Edward in the first time those two have ever met. And capturing the Super Heavyweight Championship. And Ryuji now in trouble. Edward grabbing his shoulders and trying to make him pass out from the pain. And I think so. And no, oh, boot to the mask. And, oh, a clothesline, but Edward ain't going down. Nope, but he went down from that. Shoulder tackle, and Ryuji picking up Edward. And, uh-oh. Well, no. Oh. Side slam of some sort. And, oh, back body drop. And Edward trying to get the momentum on the Ryuji. With Ryuji with a clothesline, and now taunting, and Edward... Running back into the ring. And what is he gonna do here? Just had him in a headlock. And oh, belly to belly from Edward. And oh, stomp to the face. And oh, no, a hard knee. And, and arm slam. Edward literally trying to wear down Ryuji Salta, but Ryuji. No! Hip attack into the corner and driving his knee right in the Edwards mask. We've seen Edward nearly break Edwards mask with that monster kick that he's kind of famous for. He cracked it from what we remember, but he could have done much worse. And we know that monster kick is really powerful. Ryuji with a gator roll and letting go of his mask and going for a camel clutch it looks like and pulling on his mask trying to bend his head backwards but oh Edward gets out of it and oh no punch to the face and a shoulder tackle again now Ryuji in control of this match and oh Slamming on Edward's back. And Ryuji in control. Or never mind, a boot to the face from Edward. And no! Oh, Ryuji running over Edward. And. Oh god. Oh no! East River crossing! Oh god! We've seen Ryuji practically destroy people with that move. He's destroyed. The Ryuja brothers with the help of his former tag team partner, Black Sheep. And oh, trying to toss Ryuji, but oh, raking the eyes. And over the top rope, and there goes Edward. And Ryuji gonna go follow him. And Ryuji picking Edward up. Oh, gut punch. And Edward in trouble. What is he gonna do now? And 
no, face first, right onto the announce tables, the Spanish announce table over there. And look. Edward rolled in back into the ring, and Ryuji gonna follow him. Oh, jawbreaker! And oh, Edward pushing Ryuji off him. And, oh, aiming for, aiming for his back, and uh oh, that reverse choke slam. We've seen him use this before several times. Oh, reverse choke slam on the super heavyweight champion. Oh, an elbow drop right after. Yuji. Oh. Oh, looks like he's going to go for the Irish Curse Trifecta here. No, oh, never mind. That's the Machka kick. One, two, but Edward somehow kicked out of that. That echoed throughout the entire stadium, and we all know it. Ryuji Sauta, again, nearly nearly broke that mask and oh double axe handle another one and got wrench and Ryuji on a roll right now and oh looks like he's gonna go for the East River Crossing again Ooh. East River Crossing for a second time is this over one two no it is not and Ryuji is complaining to the referee about it and, oh, looks like he's going to go for that Monchka kick again. This is cracked. This mask open. And, oh. And, what the hell? Wait, that didn't even phase, Ed, phase Edward. That second one didn't even phase him. He's on his knees, but he's not. Ryuji ain't going for the pin, though. I don't think... I don't think Ed, uh, Edward can believe what's going on. And, oh, a kick to the stomach. And Ryuji, what is he going to go for here? Oh, nothing as Edward just hit him in the face. And oh, no, no, that death grip covering his face. What is that? What's going to happen here? Is Ryuji going to pass out? or He passed out. Well then, that happened. Either way, what an impressive match these two showed. There was one of two East River crossings, and there was a reverse choke slam from Edward. No, oh. I'm surprised Ryuji didn't come out on top on this. This was no disqualification. One, two. There's the second East River Crossing that didn't even get the job done. Ryuji, you gotta admit that he came close. But in the end, Edward with the victory. Here is your winner, and still the YWL Super Heavyweight Champion, Edward! Well, that does it for the YWL. Thank you all for watching this match. And also, thank you, Mark, for letting me join this show for you. Next time I he see you, I'm going to crack your skull open. Either way, thank you guys for watching, and we hope you enjoy the rest of Saba Beach. G'day, g'day, g'day. It's Bruce Northaway, the lead commentator for the CAW. And tonight we are providing this match for XPWL Double Beat Slam Fest. So the following contest is scheduled for one fall, and it is a triple threat match. Introducing first, from the deep blue sea, she is Beating Frenzy, the Shark Pony! And Beating Frenzy who only just debuted in the CAW, not even a month into her career in the CAW herself. But out of the ring, she is a happy, well, friendly shark. But when she's in the ring, she can be vicious. I have no idea how she flips the switch. Frenzy. Well, she is to have around, I've got to say that. I get between her and a fish. Ooh, boy. 
and I'm looking at the Sabu Base Man here. I'm not sure what I can make a beating frenzy here. And introducing the second competitor in this match. She is from Hearts Unknown. She is the demonic healer. This is Nurse Banshee. Nurse Banshee, only just this week, made a debut in the CAW Thursday Night Anakin. What a show and she did that match. She is also the head of the CAW medical staff. Who after this match, I'm pretty sure she's gonna go into the medical room and actually offer to help whatever injuries happen tonight. I guess that'll be XBWL's choice if they let her help her. Now normally we're in arena, so the effect of her entrance doesn't really come across. She normally has the lights turned off for this. So that a lot of our CAW wrestlers don't want to get injured because they find this woman great. And honestly, I think you can understand why. Oh! Where'd that come from? And introducing the final competitor in this match. She is from the Equestrian Outback. Now, she makes her home in Ponyville. She is the lead singer slash lead guitarist of the band. This is Dusty No. And on a side note, Dusty Notes here is actually the wife of XBWL slash CAW slash YWL star Stone Cold True Blue. And Dusty herself is a formidable fighter. She came very close to capturing the then Hardcore Championship. And the champion at the time was Trixie Lola Moon. And well, she was a very worthy champion at the time. Now originally this match was going to be scheduled to have at least one PWO member but after their actions on CAW Thursday Night Anarchy CAW management told them that you are not to go to Sable Beach Slam Fest So, Feeding Frenzy is ready Nurse Banshee is ready and Dusty Notes is ready Alright ref, ring that bell Let's do this. And Feeding Frenzy charges into Dusty Note straight away. Now outside of the ring, those two are best friends. Well, not best, best friends, but they are friends. Feeding Frenzy is more the best friend of Stone Cold True Blue. And Nurse Banshee, hard clothesline. Jawbreaker. And, oh, block the clothesline and forearm smash. And snap suplex. And I think she let that go. And Nurse Banshee slapped, but Dusty blocked it, kicked to the gut. A kick pull and step over heel to step over heel kick and drop kick. Now Nurse Banshee is wearing heels, so her drop kicks can hurt. Jawbreaker. And well, tried to go for a discus clothesline, but Nurse Banshee blocked it. Clothesline ducked. Forearm smash. What the hell is Feeding Frenzy doing? A kick to the gut and Frenzy charge. Oh, a knee to the back of Nurse Banshee. And Feeding Frenzy. Whoever, well, no, wasn't going to do a dragon screw leg whip. Drops down on Dusty's knee. But Dusty leg trips, beating Frenzy. Oh, hard clothesline. And going for a pinfall. One. Kick out. And Nurse Banshee picks up Dusty. And Irish whip into the corner and, oh, tried to go for a splash but missed. And Dusty, it, Irish whipping. Nurse Banshee tried to go for a drop kick. Oh, Dusty just hung herself in the tree of woe. But quickly got herself down. Actually, I kind of missed what happened there. A slap kick to the gut. And she calls that the demon drop. Or the... I don't know what she calls that. Go for the pinfall. One, two, kick out. And Nurse Banshee tried to do a stomp. Duck the clothesline from Dusty. And 
Release, German suplex. And Dusty rolling out of the ring. Pele kick. And beating Frenzy. Looks like she's warming it up. And looks like she's going for her patented spear gun super kick. Going for the pinfall. One, two, kick out. And, well, no complaints from beating Frenzy, but a stomp to the lower back. And Darcy tried to go for a close one, but missed. And, oh, that beating Frenzy was going for a belly to belly, but ended up ringing the bell. And going for a pinfall. One, two, oh, not even a two count. Oh, Nurse Banshee screams, but I think that mask kind of blocks most of that out. Implant, DDT, hard clothesline, second hard clothesline. Duck and power slam. And, oh, I don't know what that was, but it looked like it hurt, feeding frenzy. And Dusty, trying to go for a body slam, but kicked to the back of the knee. Hard clothesline, ducked. And... Oh, looks like she was going for a oh, drop down on Nurse Banshee's knee. Going for the pinfall. One. Kick out. On a one. And a kick to the back right where Banshee's wings are. And that kick, I think it hit the beating frenzy as well. A couple of stomps missed. Kick to the gut. And, oh, body slam reversal. Shoved off. Irish whip into the corner. And spins around beating frenzy. And it looks like she's... Dusty Notes is tying Feeding Frenzy to the Tree of Woe. <coughs> oh, does this mean Dusty Notes is going to fly coast to coast? And Nurse Banshee just took a step back because she knows what's coming. And coast to coast and oh, pinpoint accuracy. Lucky Dusty does not like wearing country boots because that really would have hurt. Like cowgirl boots, I meant to say. And Nurse Banshee on the shoulders and... Oh, rolling backbreaker. And an elbow shot to Dusty's midsection. Kick to the gut. And another one of those demon drops. And feeding frenzy. Going for the pinfall. One. Two. And. Bada dum. Bup. Bup. Another ref bites Dust. And hard close line. I think that almost took Frenzy's head off. And it's the. Oh, what a kip up from feeding frenzy. I think she inadvertently knocked down Nurse Banshee. Forearm smash. Kip up. And inverted atomic drop. And body slam. Looks like Nurse Banshee is going to roll out of the ring. Pele kick on the Dusty Notes. And Feeding Frenzy just jumped out of the ring. Oh, that's right. This is under extreme rules. So all the toys under the ring are legal. She grabbed the kendo stick. And, oh, shot to the stomach. And looks like she's going for a cross face. But she's doing it with the kendo stick. And, whoa. Nurse Banshee broke it up. No, Dusty Notes breaking it up. Hitting Frenzy in the head several times with the hard part of the kendo stick. The handle. Shot to the stomach and hip toss. And Dusty Notes looks like she's going to hit power bomb. Going for the pinfall. One, two. Great. Oh, feeding frenzy kind of lost focus for a few seconds. I think that would have cost her the, that cost her the match. Now let's take a look at some of the replays of this match. And there's one of the pale kicks from feeding frenzy. And she calls that the spear gun. And that was one of the reversals from Dusty Knight. And the coast to coast. Oh, that really would have hurt. And there was one of the demon drops from Nurse Banshee. But here is your winner. Dusty! No! And I can tell and I can tell somewhere in the locker room right now that her husband, Stone Cold True Blue, is bloody crying victory for his for his wife tonight. Now I wanna thank the, XP, the XPWL for inviting me here, especially you, Mark Wondershare. But thank you for inviting us, and now I throw the keys back to you. Here we go. This will be interesting. A match uh, featuring talent that we don't actually have. They come from another organization, but nevertheless, we're going to see them competing tonight. 
some very interesting characters, to say the least. This match has actually been provided to us by a friend of ours, Miss Stormport. So, we'll be happy to commentate this match for them. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is an unsanctioned match. Currently on her way to the ring from Equestria. We do not know her real name because she won't tell anyone what it is. This is the Operator. Code name, Winter! And Winter coming out here on that friggin' hog motorcycle. Again, we have never seen these two in action. This will be a first time for us. It might give us a little bit of a insight into the wrestling organization that these two came from. Nevertheless, our next competitor should be coming out any time now. Her opponent, from under the ocean, she is the captivating, fatal attraction of any sea creature with a pulse. The Vampire Siren Requiem Alor! Again, with not being able to see these two in action, I have personally uh, wanted to watch these matches and actually get a good look at it. You'll notice there's a bit of video distortion. I believe we're actually uh, we're experiencing a little bit of video difficulty with this particular match. We'll hopefully have that fixed before we start the uh, tag team tournament, which should be coming up after this. Here we go as the bell rings. And they lock up in the center, and Winter immediately pushing Requiem back into the corner, trying to force her... Force her back into the corner, the referee breaks it up. Of course, the referee is an XBWL referee, so that's already a bad sign, especially if he gets knocked around. Requiem pushing Winter back against the ropes. And the ref getting involved again. Nice suplex. Requiem picks up Winter. Nice reverse suplex. And Requiem is taking control of this match as, oh, no, maybe not. Winter flips up into the air onto a Hurricane Rana holding the pin. A little bit too close to the ropes there. The referee was going to go for the count, but he decided against it. I think Winter's arm was underneath the uh, middle rope. Requiem with a kick to the gut. And, oh, drops down with an uppercut. Grabbing Winter by the hair. Winter counters with a jawbreaker. Arm drag takeover. And, ooh, body slam, Requiem. Oh, here we go, running start off the ropes and a spin out elbow drop. Whoa, counter Hurricane Rana by Winter. And now Requiem finding herself on her back, hard elbow drop by Winter, another one. Another one, Jesus. Requiem just showing no mercy in this match. Going for a headlock. Holding the headlock in place here. Trying to wear Requiem down. Back to her feet. Ooh, couple hard shots there. Kick to the kick right to the thigh. Requiem thrown into the corner and what a tackle! Backhand spring and another tackle in the corner. And up and launches herself into a turnbuckle drop kick. Requiem is in trouble. Winter pulling Requiem back toward the center of the ring. Rolls her over, probably going for Yes, a cover here. Ref in position, went for a count, not even a one. Requiem kicked out before there was even a one count and she's getting back to her feet. Oh, what a forearm shot, another one. And Requiem is having a lot of trouble with Winter here. Winter with a lot of assaults. Using those forearms and that fist of hers to her advantage. Oh, went for a goal. Went for a spinning wheel kick. Requiem caught her and made her pay for it. 
And now they're out here on the beach sand, beating the hell out of each other. Oh, what a hit. And oh, back elbow right to the top of Winter's head. And Requiem with a drop kick, and Winter collides with the apron of the ring. And oh, hard shot there. Winter thrown back into the ring by Requiem. Here she goes back in after her. Referee keeping an eye on this. Again, these aren't our superstars, so the ref's trying to keep a little bit of extra care. I think it might also be a false count anywhere contest. And, oh, spinning senton. Rolling, sorry, rolling senton, I should say. And, oh, Winter with a chin lock here, trying to go for a submission. Directly, I'm able to get out of it. Oh, nice Hurricane Rana. And a rolling neck snap. Winter doing really good in this match. Another pinfall attempt. One. And this time she got a one out of it. Ooh, drop kick right to the back of the head. Winter thoroughly in control here. Requiem with a nice counter. Nice arm breaker. Irish whip pulls her back into a power slam. And whoa, what the hell? Whoa, Requiem with a nice cartwheel. Showing off there for the crowd. Whoa, hard clothesline by the Vampire Siren. Another one. And a third one. Right into the corner. Here comes Requiem again. Nice clothesline hanging herself up on the ropes. Requiem going from behind here, picks up Winter and drops her. Oh, she's holding on. Back suplex, German suplex. And Requiem turns her over, up and over, vertical regular suplex. Requiem going for the cover here. One, two, only a two count. Measuring Winter, this might be the end of it. Requiem is trying to go for the win here. She is damn determined. Oh, oh, Irish curse backbreaker, and she's not letting go. Another one, three of them in a row. One, two, three, and Requiem Allure. In her first showing here in an XBWL arena, manages to pick off and beat Winter. Let's take a look at some of the replays here and see some of the action. There's a nice Hurricane Rana. But again, like I said, Winter's arm was underneath the bottom rope, and I think the ref caught it. Nevertheless, for the effort that Winter put in, she did really good in this match, but Requiem able to get the win here. That was exciting. There's the Irish curse trifecta there that she ended up pulling off. Is it the Irish curse or the Siren's curse? I do not know, but whatever it was, it secured her the win tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner, the Vampire Siren, Requiem Allure! With that, all of our invitational matches are done and we can move on with the tournament. That being said, here we go with the very first round coming at you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first round and the first match in the XPWL Women's Tag Team Tournament to crown the new XPWL Women's Tag Team Champions. Currently in the ring from Costa Rica and Japan, respectively, they are the team of Brioni Del Rey and Kaze. Priyama Kaze! Top. It's going to be a hell of a long journey, but hey, it's in one night. Break. 
now all they gotta do is go through these two. Their opponents from Aperture Science. They are the team of Carrot Core and Matt and Lightning Dustbine. They are two thirds of the Magitech Free Hunters. And these two also looking to capture the Women's Tag Team Championship. They have not ever held it in their career either, just like Riyama Kaze. And by the looks of it, they're coming in here to give it their all. So I can only imagine just how much damage we are gonna get out of this. Here we go. The women's tag team title tournament is set up like this. All the matches are tornado tag based. There are no tagging. And they are extreme rules, so no disqualification, no count out, and you can pin anywhere, false count anywhere in this match. As we are getting started here, as Dustbine and Briani and Kaze and Karen Moore seem to be the ones that have separated themselves from the pack, dividing into, uh, dividing into their proper opponents. And by the looks of it, the Magitex might be taking early command of the match. And Briani and Kaze are in trouble already right off the bat here. Eric Cabrana. Karakor tried for a brain buster. Kaze dodged it. And both uppercut to the back of Karakor's head. Very hard to keep track of all the participants at once. Oh, Kaze with a nice power slam. Briani going for a cover here. One. Only a one on Dustbine. Karakor trying to recover on the outside here. Does find it a big disadvantage without her partner in the ring. Karakor back on her feet. And Kaze being a little overconfident there. It gets pulled back onto the turnbuckle. Itsuguri misses. And the girls are all over the place. There goes Briani over the top into the beach sand. Does find up on the top rope. What is she waiting for? Well, whatever it was, it's not going to happen. Briani getting back into the ring and running right into Dustbine's drop kick. And Briani rolling out again. Kaze at a big disadvantage here without her partner, just like uh, just like uh, Karakor, or sorry, Dustbine was earlier when Karakor was outside the ring. Karakor reaching under the apron, looking for toys. What is she going for? Uh oh, we got a table being introduced. Whether or not it's used in the match is beyond me. Briani with a nice roll up. The referee going for the count. One, only one. The ref really slow on the draw there. I figured she probably would have gotten a two count, maybe even a three count. And boom, Kaze with a nonchalant kick to the side of Karakura's face. Uh oh. Suplex attempt. No, Karakura roll up. And Briani breaks it up immediately. Roll up this time by Karakor again, and Briani breaks it up again. Karakor making two desperate attempts for a pinfall, but I don't know why she would do it there. No, oh, Russian leg sweeps landed on the table. Dustbine picks up Kaze, and oh, Briani kicking Dustbine. Dustbine dropped Kaze, she landed right on the top of her head. Carry counter. Try to go for a spinning kick. No luck there. Dustbine grabbing a hold of Kaze and holding on for dear life here. She's going for the Chimera Plex. There's two out of three. Straight jacket German. There's the number three. The Chimera Plex connects. And Briani breaks up the count immediately. Karakor going right after her. Grabs a hold of her. Uh oh. Oh, oh my god! Kind of a reverse capture suplex, dumping Briani right on the top of her head. And Dustbine will oh, kick to the head on Kaze there. Briani, oh look at this, pump handle. Pump handle, oh! Over oh, the head slam, sit out power bomb. 
by Gusbein. One, two, and almost a three there. Briani with a nice pinfall. Gusbein could not get close enough to stop it. Kaze again with another leg trip. And oh, Briani just got laid out with brass knuckles. Again, anything goes. Karakor bringing brass knuckles into the ring like her robotic body really needed them. But at the same point, I mean, come on. Uh-oh, detonation kick! And Karakor, well, she was laid out there. I don't know why Kaze decided not to go through with it. Over the top rope, and there goes Karakor back down to the floor. Briani up on the top rope here. Oh my god, a big splash off the top rope. Right after a kick out, Karakor did not have any time to react, and Briani came right down on top of her. One, two, three. We've got a three count here. Briami Kaze, ex ex they advance to the next round. Not bad. Briani kept the distraction long enough so that Kaze could get the pinfall here. Let's take a look at some of this. There's the end of the Chimera Plex. These girls really brought it all into this match. There's another shot of that sit out power bomb, and here's that pump handle suplex. Karakor landed real awkwardly on her left shoulder, or no, her right shoulder, sorry. Here are your winners, Priyama Kaze! And these two advancing to the next round, they are first getting closer to tasting XPWL Women's Tag Team Championships gold. And, oh, look at this, Kaze's actually getting in on this dance in here. They might be celebrating too soon, though. I really hope that they don't get too overconfident. That being said, we'll move on to the next round. It's uh, the second match of the first round, sorry. Uh-oh. Here we go. There's Flint out on the uh, out on the aisleway. You know damn well that Flint and Abigail would love to take the XPWL Women's Tag Team Championship home with them as well. Here we go. What the hell? Bit of a glitch there with our camera. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the second match in round one of the XPWL Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament. Currently on their way to the ring from Dark Side. They are the founding members of the flock, Flint and the Wraith Sister Abigail! And again, these two desperately wanting to get themselves a bit more recognition. They haven't really been up to anything lately. Abigail, Brittany, and Flint all together have been debating who would be the best ones for the job here in the Tag Team Championship Tournament. And again, not you're not going to have too much time to rest between matches. That we need to make clear. You are not really getting all that much rest time. In fact, Right now, Priyama Kaze, because they still have to wait for the rest of the first round matches to finish, they've got the best advantage here because they'll be the ones that get the most rest. So knowing Priyama Kaze, what they're probably doing is probably either stretching or sleeping backstage or getting some kind of something going for them. And here comes the next team. Ladies and gentlemen, the next team first from... <clears throat> Equestria, she is the Sweetie Drop Shuriken, Bonja Spy! And as you can see on the ILA, our uh, Sobble Beat Slam Fest is being brought to you by Raw Joint Wraps. If you need, if you need to wrap your joint, go it raw. Not really brought to us, it's just shameless advertising. That and the teleprompter guys were lazy and decided not to get rid of the WWE stuff. Oh well, not that big a deal. We can always work around it. But Banja looks ready to go here.
A little surprised though, I figured Lyrenley would have come out with her. Then again, her music isn't stopping, so I can only imagine that Lyrenlin is more than likely on her way out here. There she is. Her tag team partner from the Infected Lands. She is the Adrenaline Junkie, Lyrenalyn! And Lyrenalyn full of energy here. Look at her go. The flock are gonna have their hands full with this little Spitfire. She's all energy. That's literally all she is. She's always hopped up on adrenaline, so she's constantly going at 200 miles an hour. That being said, it'll be interesting to see how this match plays out with these two. Here we go, again. No disqualification, no countouts, and falls count anywhere in this tournament. And here we go, Abigail rushing Bonja and taking her off her feet like Reynolds with a nice field kick. And we'll be able to see if like Reynolds' durability can last against Flint's strength. And Abigail and Bonja, both the more cunning members of their teams, going at it. Flint with a headlock in on Lyre Redlin here. Lyre Redlin gets out of it. Abigail runs over Bonja. And Flint isn't wasting any time looking for weapons. Uh-oh, we got a ladder being introduced. Oh, what a shot. Lyre Redlin laid out there. And Flint really laying into Lyre Redlin. Bonja going out after... Abigail on the floor, we got a one count on Flint. Lyrenalyn kicked out. Bonja picks up. Abigail trying to take her over to the corner. Abigail trying to fight out of her grip and does so. And Flint having a hard time catching Lyrenalyn. A little too fast. And Abigail sending Bonja into the barricade. And oh, what a DDT by Flint. Arm drag takeover and Bonja and Abigail are getting just covered in sand here. And oh, Abigail trips herself up. Bonja now with the ladder and hits Abigail with it. Abby back up and gets clocked again. Bonja using that as a weapon. Tried another pin attempt there. Like Rendlin did not even get a one count. The referee keeping an eye on Abby and Bonja on the floor and completely took, it, took his focus away. Flint, oh, Flint hammered with Lyrenalyn against the ropes and Lyrenalyn with a cheap shot, catching her with an elbow. Bonja now slammed into the post. There goes the referee out to make the count. One, only one. And Lyrenalyn now trying to, whoa, she, well, she was trying to get involved. Flint not letting her get that far. Oh, Northern Light suplex by Bonja, and Bonja going for the cover. Flint actually uh, broke it up. Like Redlin tried to go for a heel kick to catch Flint off guard, but missed. Oh, Insiguri! Like Redlin working over Flint here. And Flint throwing Like Redlin back into the ring. And Flint's going after that ladder. Abigail runs over, Bonja on the floor. Again, all these teams want to make it to the end here. And oh, Flint runs over Lyrenalyn. And Flint's going under the ring again. Now what is she after? Oh no, we've got a table and a ladder. Now this match just got dangerous. One, two, Bonja only gets a two count. And Flint goes right after a rushing leg sweep into the beach stand. Flint picking Bonja up here. 
and drops her on the apron. Shot. Lyrenal in trying for another pin here. One, two, only two. Abigail managing to kick out again. Lyrenal in getting frustrated here. Bonja now, knee to the back. Oh, wow. Lyrenal in with a face buster, drilling Abby face first into the sand. Bonja catching the super kick on Flint. Oh, Uranagi two, and that almost ended the match. The super kick almost ended Flint in this match. Meanwhile, Lyrenalin drilled right into that sand with the Uranagi side slam. Abigail had no qualms about dropping her on her head. Oh, and uh-oh. Anja picking up some steam here, knocking Abigail around. Lyrenalin, Sunset Flip, Power Bomb, and oh, Flip right into the table. And a Lariat from Bonja Spy. Elbow drop. Lyrenalin is going to try to go up to the top rope here. And she's measuring Flint. Bonja gets a headbutt for her troubles. Flint, oh wow. Lyrenalin tried to go for some kind of hurricane runner, but she overshot the jump. And oh, right into B mine! Abigail reassessing the B mine submission move, that deadly iron claw. And look at this. Flint just laying back in the corner, waiting for the submission. Baja interrupts. Flint picks her up and hits her with a heavy backbreaker. And oh. Back suplex attempt, like rental encounters. And whoa, Abigail was going for something, but she didn't get the Lyrenalin into close enough range. And there's a power bomb from Lyrenalin. And Abigail rolling out of the ring lands directly on that ladder. Oh. And Abigail is just laid out here, trying to get herself back to her feet. And both Lyrenalin and Bonja now working over Flint. And oh, the fall away slam. Bonja now working over Flint's arm. They take away one of those, it takes away some of her strength. Abigail Uranagi again, and this time catching Lyrenalin off guard on the mat. Bonja throwing Flint out of the ring here. What is she up to? Sunset flip power bomb by Lyrenalin and a tornado DDT into the sand. We got a two count and again Abigail kicks out. I agree with the crowd. This is definitely awesome. Lyrenalin gets run over. And look at this. Flint with a victory roll. Didn't get anything with it though. Abigail setting up Lyrenalin up against a barricade. What the hell is she doing? And I think Flint's trying to go for a submission here. Couldn't get Bonja to action, or couldn't get Bonja to submit. And what the hell? Abigail's got like Redlin up on the guardrail. What the hell is she doing here? Oh my god, a spinning wheel kick off of the off of the apron of the ring, right onto that guardrail. And Bonja makes the save. The referee completely out of position. That match should have been over right there. Oh god, Flint choke slam! Going for the pin, Bonja again interrupts. Flint throws Bonja back into the ring. Abigail trying to get her back to her feet. Levels her. And oh, Flint tried a knee drop from the top into the sand. Did not pan out. Bonja now with a hammer lock into a chin lock here. And Abigail managing to get herself out. Lyrenalin already having enough trouble with Flint as it is on the outside here. Flint is not letting Lyrenalin get an inch here. And Abigail suplex back into the ring. Abigail going to the top rope. What the hell is she thinking? Off the top missile drop kick, but she missed Bonja. Bonja just barely dodged it. 
and oh, Crack right in the head with that fist. Ooh, back elbow. Flint. Oh, atomic drop on the line. Randall, and we got a pin. One, two, no. Logic kicks out again. Got a rear naked chin lock. Drifter DDT on the floor by Flint. And like Randall and might have just gotten her ass laid out here. She is down. Is it over? One, two, three, and the flock advance. The Drifter DDT knocked like Randall and right the hell out. There's that Uranagi into the sand. Hard impact. There's the super kick that clipped Flint in the ear. Only got a two count for uh, Bonja though. Bonja's a lariat from coming back into the ring from the outside. There's B Mine with Bonja obviously interrupting. Here are your winners. The Flock! So we will see the Flock beat Briyama Kaze in the next round of the tournament. Meanwhile, we'll be going to round one, match three momentarily as the Flock celebrates in the ring. go into the next match here. The Dark Omen is falling over the crowd? What the hell is this? This is a Dark Omen Shadows time. This is the XBWL Women's Tag Team title tournament. What the hell? As far as I know, Rocket Isle and Chad weren't even booked on the show. I was not expecting this. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I see them. Never mind. I, I, I'm a fool. Ladies and gentlemen, the subjects are making their appearance through the smoke and fire of the Dark Omen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is match three of round one of the XPWL Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament. Currently on their way to the ring from Equestria, they are known as the unchallenged demigod of the freaks, Pain and Shimmer Cakes, and the great and magnificent magic bear. They are the subjects! Ladies and gentlemen, the subjects channeling the demon of Dark Omen through their entrance. Rockadile may not have been booked on this event, but I know he's backstage and I know he's been coaching the subjects, getting them ready for this. And if I know the subjects like I know them, I know that they are going to fight very, very hard to get themselves as far into the tournament as possible. But their first, the first object in their way is the Cybernetic Connection tag team of Rainbind Dash and Derpy Gun. And I can only imagine just how much they are going to have to put forth to win this match. And remember, because this is the match number three, whoever wins this match and the next match, they are not going to have as long a recovery time as Briyama Kaze are. As far as I know, Briyama Kaze are actually backstage. They're having drinks. They're trying to relax, trying to keep themselves relaxed, loose, keep themselves from getting all tensed up. Because the last thing you need is to go into a tournament match not ready to go. Especially once you've already advanced to the second round.
they come. Ladies and gentlemen, their opponents from Equestria and representing the elements of insanity. They are the tag team of the Muffet Cannon, Derpy Gun, and the Cyber Rain Boom, Brainvine Dash. They are the Cybernetic Connection! Brainvine and Derpy Gun, they've been kind of on a roll. But I know for a factor that Brainvine has gotten increasingly frustrated with losing lately. One can only imagine that if this tournament lights a fire up under Brainvine's ass or not. Derpy Gun's just happy to be a part of the tournament, but Brainvine isn't just happy. Uh, Brainvine, we talked to her earlier today before we even got into the building. We know for a factor that Brainvine basically said it does not matter. The only thing that matters right now is winning. And we are pairing off Brainvine and Shivercakes and going after each other. Derpy got a magic there on the in the corner, and the referee has been laid out already. As Derpy Gun and Oh Magic Bear, they lock up Shiver Cakes and Greenvine. These two fought before, also on the outside XP. Well, this is more like a grudge match, if anything, between these two. And oh, Stun Gun by Derpy Gun, and Magic Bear goes down. Greenvine with an ankle lock. No, no luck there. Greenvine unable to hold on to it long enough. And oh, Magic Bear with a disrespectful slap to Derpy Gun. Derpy Gun and Rainvine both taking advantage of their speed. Oh, there's a cutter. Derpy Gun, whoa, suplex, power bomb. And a gut stomp by Shiver Cakes. Shiver Cakes ducking out for a breather. Unfortunately, that leaves Magic Bear at Rainvine and Derpy Gun's mercy in the ring. Derpy got right up over the top. Really Magic Bear trying to hold her own here. Throws Rainvine into the corner, tried to throw her over, and Rainvine got the elbow up. Off the ropes. Whoa! Overhead, belly to belly by Rainvine. Shimmer Cakes trying to go after Derpy Gun here. Derpy Gun going out of the ring after her. Hammer lock, Northern Lights on the floor. Magic Bear with a chin lock. Rainvine gets out of it. And again, Derpy Gun and Rainvine trying to single out the subjects one by one. Now Rainvine going for weapons. Shimmer Cakes now back on her feet. She's going out after Derpy Gun. And Rainvine brings a bat into the ring. Crack! Oh! She cracked Shimmer Cakes over the bat. Went to hit her again. Shimmer Cakes just barely dodged it. And Derpy Gun got caught in the head with it. Magic Bear, oh, focusing on the head, dropping her with that uh, with that Death Valley driver, but stuck her knee out, caught her right in the back of the head with it. Oh, Shimmer trying to go for a kick. Nice dragon screw. Both Derpy Gun and Rainvine outside. Or, sorry, both Derpy Gun and Shimmer takes outside the ring here. Magic Bear trying to get some steam in here on Rainvine. Derpy Gun getting back into the ring so she can interrupt. And by the looks of it, Magic Bear for the Razzle Dazzle. And unfortunately for her, Derpy Gun was right there to break it up. She didn't even get it cinched in. Oh, Shimmer Cakes on the other hand. Dragon Slayer. Derpy Gun breaks it up. Magic Bear getting out of the ring for a breather, and now Derpy Gun and Rainvine taking advantage and going after Shimmer Cakes together. Shimmer Cakes over the top rope, and again, I don't think either, I don't think either Derpy Gun or Rainvine are really focused on teaming right now. They seem to be hell bent and determined that they are going to get the win, and they don't care about the other one, and that might cost them. And an oh, arm breaker. Back suplex and Magic Bear right into the beach sand. Shimmer Cakes, of course, taking that hard PDT onto the apron of the ring. And Derpy Gun again using her speed to her advantage. Shimmer Cakes back up. Arm bar, arm breaker. Turns Derpy Gun, suplex, drops around the back of her head, and a super kick from Rainvine. 
Shimmer kicks out of the ring. Magic Bear trying her best to make light of the situation. She just took the muffin cannonball from uh, the Derpy Gun, and that's that might end it for. Oh, look at this! Never mind. This might end it for Derpy Gun. Grand spectacle! The rolling butterfly cutter. Here we go. One, two, three. We've got a win here. We got a pinfall, and Shimmer Cakes just got body slammed on the apron. Rainbine can't believe what she just saw. There's another shot of the flatliner that caught Magic Bear completely by surprise. There's the death grip Shimmer Cakes had on Derpy Gun until Rainbine got involved, and there's another flatliner shot. And there's a shot of the Muffin Cannonball. Magic Bear. She's gonna wanna get as much rest as she can in between because uh, that, that's gonna cost them. Here are your winners, the Subjects! The Subjects advance to round two. They meet the winners of the next match. Shimmer Cakes and Magic Bear get her, better get backstage and probably get their demon lover to uh, massage them or something, give them some kind of thing to help relax their muscles and everything for later tonight because it's not going to take long. That being said, here comes the final round of round one and here come the former longest reigning XBWL women's tag team champions. The only ones that have held them longer are the legendary tag team, the Rat, Cynical Glitter, and La Libby, the Ockling, who are now retired from active competition and two of the inductees into the XBWL Hall of Fame. The very first inductees, I might add. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is match number four in round one of the XPWL Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament. Currently in the ring, they are from Equestria. They are the team of Soneka Duskan and Radagio Gassum, and they make up two-thirds of the bloody symphony!
And these two are brimming with confidence. They really, really think that they're going to advance to the next round. And you know what? The reputation does precede them. They are freaking tough as nails tag team. Then again, they've never faced odds like this. The one are making their tag team championship tournament debut. And I believe that this is Trish. This is not Trish's first pay-per-view, but I believe this is Kai's very first pay-per-view. That being said, this should be interesting, to say the least. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the next participants from the realm of shadows, they are the team of Leader Trish and Kai. They are the one! Trish and Kai looking to capture Tag Team Championship gold. They might be able to do that tonight at this tournament. Again, this is only round one. But this is the final match in round one, and I got to tell you, I am a little intimidated by what we are going to see. Here we go. The Symphony are ready to go. The One are ready to go. Here we go. The bell rings, and we are squaring off Trish and Rodaggio and Kai and Sonica. Trish with a hard kick. Kai trying to kick Sonica. Sonica caught the leg. Dragon screw leg whip. And oh, Trish with one of her own, a nice counter with a wheel kick. Here we go. I think this match is going to come down to who has more finesse because Kai is a very accomplished uh, grappler in the ring. And Trish is not a slouch either. She knows how to fight. And she's in there against one of the more cunning members of the Bloody Symphony in Radagio Dazzle. Dumps Radaggio off the top rope here, going out after her, while Kai and Sonica still exchanging kicks and counters. Radaggio trying to drag Trish to the apron, stun gun! Radaggio looking for toys already, there goes Kai. Oh, sledgehammer shot to Trish's knee! from Rodaggio, and we've got a pin already from Sonica. The ref is out of position, we got a one, but Kai kicked out. That could have been a three count if the referee was out there, but sadly he was not. Rodaggio getting in a good shot with that sledgehammer on Trish. And Trish, oh, tried for a DDT counter, Rodaggio countered himself. And wow, Sonica is really laying into Kai and out on the floor. Driving and drilling her into the floor with the uh, double knee. Sonica smashing Kai face first into the apron. And now all four ladies are back in the ring. There's the ref, Northern Light Suplex. Kai with a heavy clothesline, Ragazzi with a stomp to the gut. Off the ropes, back body drop by Kai. And catching Sonica in a spine push. Sonica rolling out of the ring. Now Kai going into the ring looking for weapons. And Trish, Irish whip off the ropes. Nice arm drag takeover on Rodaggio. And oh, Kai clocks her from behind. Catching her right in the back. And Trish now, double leg drop. Sonica trying to go after Kai here. Oh, Sonica spins through, nice kick to the head. Meanwhile, Trish stomping on Renaggio's thighs after locking her legs in place. And oh, power slam. And I think Trish just got her tail blown by the uh, 
on the end of that ball bat. And Radaggio coming into play here to stop to stop the onslaught on uh, Sonica here. And Radaggio trying to build up ahead of steam here, flying back elbow. And Radaggio picks up Kai and oh, drops him with a reverse power slam. And Sonica stirring the barrel here. Two out of three, not bad. Kai though, grabbing a hold of, oh my God! Grabbing a hold of Sonica and hit her with a tiger suplex. And the tiger suplex, Sonica landed right on her shoulders, right on the back. Kai picks up Sonica, pop up cutter! This could be it, this might be the end of the match right here. Trish going for the cover, here comes Rodaggio in. One, no, Rodaggio breaks it up. And Rodaggio with a German suplex. Kai tried to steal another pinfall, it did not happen. And oh, Kai with an uppercut, catching Rodaggio right out of nowhere. And oh, catching her in the knee with a bat. And oh. Kai tried another shot, it did not work, and look at that, Radaggio put the bat down. And oh my god. Nice belly to belly suplex by Radaggio. Going for the cover immediately. One, two, no, only two. Oh, Sonica with a hard shot. Drop kick, close line. Everybody's all over the damn place here. Radaggio. Shot to the head on Trish. Oh, back suplex. It drops off the apron and Trish goes right into it. We got a pin attempt here and only one. Like, not even. Sonica oh, rolls through with a schoolboy and a kick to the head and Trish goes down. Feet in the back. Radaggio and Sonica focused on Trish. Kai is recovering, but just barely. Kai back on her feet, reverse power slam coming up by Radaggio. And Kai laying into Sonica with those kicks. And oh, exploder suplex on to Radaggio. We got a pin attempt here. Two, only two, forever one, and Radaggio face first into the beach sand. We got another pin here. One, two, three, no, only two. I thought it was over right there. Both ladies are measuring the symphony. Uh-oh. Oh, Dream Valley Driver and Forever One at the same time, and both ladies making the cover. One, two, three, no, one, two, three. Radaggio managed to kick out, but Sonica sadly could not. The Dream Valley driver sealed the deal for Sonica Deuce Can. I did not expect Sonica and Radaggio to lose, but wow, this match was intense from bell to bell. Trish and Kai wanted it just that much more. There's the pop-up cutter for Sonica. She went through a lot in this match. Here are your winners. Trish and Kai, the one! Trish and Kai advancing to round two. This is gonna be an intense tournament. I can hardly wait to see who is gonna be in the tournament finals. Will it be? There are only four teams left. I can't wait to see who we're gonna get. And here we go. Like I said, round one's over, round two begins. Ladies and gentlemen, this is round two, match one of the XBWL Women's Tag Team Tournament. Coming to the ring, advancing from round one are the team of Brianna Del Rey and Kaze. Brianna Kaze! These two with an 
impressive showing over the Magitex in the first round. And now they await their opponent, and I know exactly who we're waiting for. That eerie music comes again. As the other second round team makes their way out here, and the creepiness factor has gone up. It's just too bad that it's in the middle of the day instead of at night so that that lantern that Abigail's carrying has a little bit more sense to it. Nevertheless, Ladies and gentlemen, the opponents also advancing from round one. They are the team of Flint and the Wraith, Sister Abigail, and they are the founding members of the Flock! <laughs> Abigail and Flint advancing as well in their match against Bonja Spy and Lyrenlin earlier in the evening. Flint and Abigail have a damn good chance in this round to beat Ryamakaze, but both teams have had a lot of rest. Right now, the thing that makes sense to the most is Ryamakaze and the flock. Whoever wins this one goes to the finals, and they will meet the winners of the next round two match. Whether it be the subjects or the one remains to be seen. Here we go. And again, these women, both, uh, all four of them, in, uh, involved in brutal matches in round one. And we're going to see just how brutal and just how much damage these uh, two teams have taken over the course of the tournament so far. Sure, they've only had one match so far, but you've got to figure fatigue is going to set in faster for these teams. And Kaze's not wasting any time with Abigail here, and I think she understands just how much, uh, just how much that resting meant to them. Flynn and Abigail probably are likewise. They were probably thinking about that as well. If I know Flick and Abigail, they more than likely kept themselves scarce as well so that they could rest in between matches as well. Chances are they were probably in the Inverted Shadows dressing room. Kaze with a flying spin kick. One, two, and oh, Kaze almost putting Abigail away. That would have been quick. Briani grabbing a hold of Flint by the face and an eye rake. I know for a factor that Flint and Abigail are both very tough competitors, but you know what? Brianna Kaze have become a very, very entertaining and very rewatchable tag team as Kaze catches Flint with an elbow. Kaze lifting Flint up by the foot, and oh, roundhouse kick. We've got a pin attempt here. One, and no, Abigail manages to break it up. Kaze picks up Flint, up onto her shoulder. Flint gets out of it, reverse DDT. Briani thrown back into the ring. Flint going for the cover. One, two, Kaze kicks out. And oh, trying to go for the Uranagi here, and Briani with a nice counter. Flint picks up Kaze, taking her over to the apron. Belly to belly suplex by Briani Del Rey, and Flint now, one, two, three, Briani Del Rey gets the pinfall over Abigail, Flint was not fast enough. Again, like I said, with the damage that they sustained in the first round, Briani Del Rey and Kaze came in here with a strategy, try to get the win as quick as possible, expend at, at the least amount of energy they could, and they did that in spades, getting some real good shots in, especially on Flint. Briani catching Abigail by surprise and getting her with that with that overhead belly-to-belly -belly suplex and catching the pinfall, especially after that Furanagi tower. 
Here are your winners and advancing to the finals of the XBWL Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament, Priya Marcazzi! Briani and Kaze are in the finals. They have a shot at the goal. And they will be meeting the winner of the next uh, the next match. Match two of round two is set to begin. And the Dark Omen has fallen again over the crowd. It's the middle of the day, so you can't really see it, but that's besides the point. With how fast Briyama Kaze tried to put away the flock, you gotta figure they're going to cherish however much time that they can get. Because of the subjects and uh, the one beat the hell out of each other, Briyama Kaze might be going into there with an advantage. That being said, that remains to be seen. Again, we've got two very tremendous tag teams about to clash in this next round. Ladies and gentlemen, this is match two of round two of the XPWL Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament. Currently on their way to the ring, they are the team of Pain Set, Shimmer Cakes, and Magic Bear. They are the Subjects! Magic Bear and Shimmer Cakes with this intricate entrance. I think this is paying homage to the Dark Omen Shadow. Again, Rocketile being backstage to not only be their coach, but a trainer, and more than likely had a hand in making sure that these two got enough rest in between rounds. Again, I know what the strategy is more than likely gonna be for the subjects of the one in this round, especially after seeing what Briyama Kaze did to conserve energy, try to get the win as quick as possible. But is that going to be even possible with Kai and Trish? Kai and Trish are both very determined to win this tournament as well. And while the subjects have a lot of credibility and their odds on favorite so far in this tournament, that doesn't necessarily mean that the one is completely outmatched here. Because remember, Shimmer Cakes at the very end of their first round match got slammed onto the apron hard by Rainvine. So you gotta wonder if there might be any chest injury or if there's any problems with Shimmer Cakes or Magic Bear coming into this match. Because I know for a fact that Shimmer Cakes was holding her chest after the first after the first round match. And I'm not sure if she might have gotten herself bandaged up backstage or whatever. I don't think she would because it, I've spoken to the subjects before. And I remember Shimmer Cakes mentioning that she would never bandage up a wound simply because if she bandaged it up, it becomes a target. But that remains to be seen. Will Shimmer Cakes and Magic Bear be able to prevail against the one? Trish and Kai also getting a short reprieve of rest of, uh, before uh, Briyama Kaze and the flock went at it. And you gotta figure Trish and Kai might not be too happy about this because they got the least amount of rest time between rounds. Nevertheless, they're both very, very prominent fighters. They're both very, very respectable warriors. And I can't wait to see this match because I don't think the subjects of the one have ever locked up. Ladies and gentlemen, the opponents who also advance to round two, they are the team of Kai and Trish. They are the one! Trish and Kai have a hell of an opportunity here. All they gotta do is knock off the subjects and they're in the finals. 
Likewise, I wonder how this is going to work because, again, they got to go through. They got to go through the subjects, and, you know, not for nothing, but I guarantee you the subjects are going to be very, very tough to beat. There goes the bell. Starting off fierce and fast. Magic Mirror going after Kai. Shimmer Cakes trying to go after Trish here. And oh! Bit of a miscommunication there. Magic Mirror catching Magic or catching Shimmer Cakes by accident and giving her the fucking baseball. Or not the baseball slide, a drop or backbreaker. Bleh. Excuse me. I'm fumbling my words. I'm excited because we're this close to the finals of the tag tournament. I really want to know who's going to the finals. And oh, Magic Bear not wasting any time. Kai caught the razzle dazzle and oh, Trish immediately with an axe handle catching Magic Bear right in the face. Trying to go for an exploder suplex. Magic Bear with a roll up. One, two. Oh, Trish counters one, only one, and this time Magic Bear didn't counter. She actually kicked out. And oh, stomp by Magic Bear onto Trish's stomach. And oh, look at this, Magic Bear catching catching Trish now on the razzle dazzle. And Trish can't escape, or at least she's trying to. Finally getting an arm free and catching Magic Bear in the head with a couple of back elbows. Spinning knee strike did not connect. And this match is getting more and more brutal. Magic Bear doing some posing. Look at that. Shimmer Cakes. Nice shot. Tried to go for a German suplex. Kai did, but it did not, it didn't pan out very well. Trish breaking up the Dragon Slayer. And back suplex. And oh, Magic Bear trying to set up, trying to go for the grand spectacle. And oh my god, Kai's leg, look at that. Oh my god, did she break it? She's trying to move, that looks painful. You can hear Kai screaming from here. There's a flatliner into an arm bar by Trish. Magic, oh, Trish with, Trish just noticed Shimmer Cakes locking in that nerve hold. Oh, what a shot in the back of the head. And stomping on the thighs again after locking the legs. And oh, up and... Shimmer Cakes trying to fight back here. And for a knee strike, Trish Potter. Magic Bear trying to figure out what to do, goes after Kai. Kai locked up in the ropes, and what the hell, Magic Bear. Getting a running start here, what the hell is she doing? Oh my god! Suicide Tornado DDT onto the floor. Taking Kai right into that, right into that sand. Oh! Shining Wizard by Magic Bear, and she's got a pin here, and the referee does not see it at all. Trish interrupted the, the pin before there could even be a count made. And oh, what an uppercut by Trish, catching Magic Bear right in the chin. Magic Bear picks up Trish. Oh, vertical suplex. Kai grabbing Shimmer Cakes by the hair, trying to take her back to the apron and catches her good. Nice knee lift from Magic Bear there. Into a pin, one, whoa, two. There was a kick out. Kai went for the elbow drop to try to break up the count, but she overshot the jump and went right over top of them. Kai tries to slam Shimmer Cakes. Shimmer Cakes gets out of it. And picks up Kai. What the hell is she doing? Uh-oh. Oh, drops Kai on the stairs head first. And Trish wailing on Magic Bear here. Got a weird naked shit lock by Shimmer Cakes. And Trish grabbing Magic Mirror by the hair, trying to take her over towards the apron and does so, smashing her face first. 
Kai now going into the ring, trying to pick up the pieces on Shimmer Cakes here. Again, this this match is going longer than Bri Oh, Brianna Kaze's and Magic Bear knees bouncing off of the steps. And Kai, spine buster after a, a back body drop. Both late. Oh no! Oh my god! Magic Bear and Exploder Suplex right up against the stairs. Trish resorting to anything to get the win here. Kai also resorting to whatever she can to secure a win. And Magic Bear just slapped Trish, just slapped the taste right out of her mouth. We got ourselves a suplex. The referee again taking a nap. That should have been a three. It only was a one count. Because the referee again, he wasn't paying attention at all. Uh oh, forever one! Oh! Magic Bear's down, this might be it! Trish going for the cover! One, two! Spoke too soon, both Kai and Trish celebrating prematurely. Magic Bear able to kick out. And counters Trish, went for a pump kick, did not work. Spinning wheel kick stops the Dender Tracks. Going for another cover here. No, didn't bother, she got up. Oh, stomping on the arm, and oh, what a knee strike from Shimmer Cakes. Hot Kai right in the mouth, she didn't even see her coming. We got a two count, one, two, and another two count. The one tried the same strategy they tried last round. And oh, Trish trying to go for a head scissors, Magic Bear slipping herself out. And I, what the hell, Shimmer Cakes, uh-oh. Shimmer Cakes has got that gleam in her eye. Here we go. Oh, look at this. Shimmer Cakes is going for the coast to coast and Magic Bear with a razzle dazzle on Trish in the middle of the ring. Oh, oh my God. Coast to coast, Kai is down. Trish trying to break her way out. And does so, Magic Bear. Oh, catches her with a kick to the gut. Picks her up. And oh, one, two, three. The subjects pick up the win. They're going to the finals. It's Priyama Kaze versus the subjects in the final round of the tag team tournament. Holy shit, what a match. These two teams brought their all out here and the only unfortunate thing I can think of is just how much damage was done in between. Again, Magic Bear with that exploder suplex getting slammed right into the steel steps. You gotta wonder if Magic Bear's back is going to play a role in that final match. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your winners and advancing to the final round. Magic Bear and Pain Set Shimmer Cakes, the Subjects! These two are not going to get any time to rest. They gotta go backstage real quick. They're going to get toweled off, get a drink of water, whatever they can, while they're waiting for Priyama Kaze. Here we go. The final match of the tournament is set to begin. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final round of the XPWL Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament. Currently on their way to the ring, they advance to the finals. The team of Brianna Del Rey and Kaze, Brianna Kaze. This is going to be insane. Brianna Kaze and the subjects in the final round. I can only imagine. This match is going to be absolutely balls to the wall. The Dark Omen again falls over this, uh, falls over the arena. You gotta wonder, will the subjects be able to strike gold tonight? The Women's Tag Team Championship awaits the winning team.
Ladies and gentlemen, their opponents and the finalists of the XPWL Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament, the team of Paige said Shimmer Cakes and the great and magnificent Magic Mare, the Subjects! And while I can see Magic Mare doing the entrance without much issue, I am noticing that she is wincing a little. I think her back is still sore from that exploder suplex that she took earlier in the evening. Actually, not even 20 minutes ago. I really hope Magic Mirror and Shipper Cakes are ready, because this is for all the marbles. Again, Magic Mare and Shimmer Cakes, no strangers to the Tag Team Championship in the women's division, they've held it before. But again, this tournament is to determine brand new champions with brand new championship belts. Magic Mare might be doing this entrance this way because it's helping stretch her back out. Again, you gotta take that into consideration. Both the subjects have taken some pretty nasty blows. Shimmer Cakes in round one got slammed onto the apron chest first. And in round two, Magic Mare took a nasty exploder suplex right into the steps. the marbles there you see that gorgeous new championship title for the women's division the XPWL women's tag team championship on the line and there they are to the victor go the spoils those brand new belts who's it gonna be here we go the bell rings and here we go shimmer cakes and Kaze locking up and magic mirror going right after Briani Del Rey Magic Mirror doing some posing here might not be the best idea. Shimmer Cakes having trouble with Kaze here. Ooh, nice job right here. And oh, flying and forearm by Magic Mirror. She's not screwing around here. Pele kick. Magic Mirror deliberately trying to keep herself in the game and going for the razzle dazzle immediately. And Briani trying to break out of it. Kaze, oh, Kaze uppercut the ref. Make sure there's no submission coming out of that, coming out of uh, Briani's mouth. And whether or not it did, the referee won't be able to hear it. The ref got cold clocked there. Kaze with a nice kick there. And Shimmer Cakes trying to go after Briani Del Rey. Briani with a nice arm bar. In the oh! Briani had a nice arm bar, was about to taunt, and she turned and Magic Air kicked her foot out from under her center face first into the mat. Uh oh! Oh! Whoa! I thought she was going for the grand spectacle. Briani with a nice counter with the Hurricane Rana. And Kaze trying to put Magic Mirror to sleep with a, with, by the looks of it, a. Uh, a what is it? A Cobra Clutch? Or a sleeper? Oh! Knee strike by Sugar Pigs. And Kaze rolling out of the ring. Oh, Briani Del Rey was measuring Magic Mare. Shimmer Cakes not having any of it. Briani tosses her over the top rope. Shimmer Cakes going to the top here, coming around. Axe handle. Magic Mare still punch drunk in the middle of the ring. Finally starting to come to. Sees Kaze coming in. Kaze, Michinoku driver. And oh, Briani with a power bomb. Oh, she's holding it. One, two. Three, it's over! Priyama Kaze have just won the next BWL Tag Team Title Tournament! I, I can't believe what I just saw! 
Magic Mirror, there you go. You see it, the grand spectacle attempt that ended up not working, and there's the pinfall. Shimmer Cakes caught in a three count while Kaze took out Magic Mirror with a roundhouse kick. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your winners of this tournament and new XPWL Women's Tag Team Champions, Ryama Kaze! I cannot believe what we just saw. This was an amazing tournament. And now we get on with the rest of the show. Holy shit. Here we go, the next match, the women's hardcore title on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is a Carpenter's Wet Dream Triple Threat match scheduled for one fall. Currently on her way to the ring, she is from Equestria and represents the elements of insanity. She is the kleptomaniacal. Rare approves! Rare fruit is more than willing to win this match and become the women's hardcore title holder. But I gotta tell you, I don't see it happening anytime soon. I mean, Peria Cakes has defended the title various times and she's come out on top. Then again, she hasn't had to defend it in a ladder match. Ladies and gentlemen, the next participant in this match, also representing the elements of insanity, and from Equestria, this is the Pill Poppin' Junkie, Apple Pills! And Apple Pills rocking a bit of a new look here. Get a load of that. Nice duster jacket. By the looks of it, she let her hair down tonight, and you can see the women's hardcore title hanging above them. Apple Pills really, really raring to go here. She wanted her chance to shine. She actually somehow managed to get herself into this match. That being said, here comes the champ. Ladies and gentlemen, the final participant in this match from Equestria and representing the Bloody Symphony. She is the reigning and defending XPWL Women's Hardcore Champion, Peria Kings! And Peria ready to go here. Remember, this is a triple threat match. This is not a one-on-one -on -one contest. So Peria does not have any championship advantage. And because this is a Carpenter's Wet Dream match where instead of pinning, the object is to grab the title from above the ring, Peria has no championship advantage here. She can't, she can't get counted out, she can't get disqualified, and she has to win by unhooking her title from above the ring. And you gotta wonder, can Peria beat odds like that when she's got two members of the Elements of Insanity in this match looking to take that belt from her. One can only wonder. Here we go. The XPWL Women's Hardcore title on the line. Rare Fruit's ready, Apple Pills is ready, and Peria is also ready. Here we go, the bell rings, and immediately Rare Fruit goes after the champion. And by the looks of it, Apple Pills and Rare Fruit might be willing to work together, considering they're both part of the same faction. Oh, alley-oop bomb by Peria, and Rare Fruit not wasting any time, going right after the ladder. Gets it back in the ring, and oh, Peria throwing Apple Pills into the corner, and Rare Fruit catching Peria from behind with the ladder. Now Apple Pills tries to deck Rare Fruit. Rare Fruit grabs it back. Oh, laser out. Here he attacks Fruity from behind, knocks it out of her hands. Nice leg sweep by Rare Fruit. Managed to get both of them in the same shot. Oh, 
Apple Pills now focusing on Peria while Rarefruit trying to recover. The ladder dangerously leaning up against the ropes there. And oh, Rarefruit with a nice snap suplex. And oh, Peria catches her right in the face. Rarefruit tried a flying clothesline. That didn't work. And oh, Apple Pills getting her feet involved. Fireman's carry. There goes Rarefruit again trying to go after it. Knocks Apple Pills down. And Apple Pills with a knee strike. You carry him right there. Hammerlock suplex. And there goes Rarefruit out of the ring. Carrier with a nice kick to the hamstring there. And off the ropes. Oh, nice kick to the head. Apple Pills now with the arm stomped on. Carrier is really laying it in thick. And oh my god, a stun gun. Apple Pills ran in and the momentum used against her with the, with the stun gun and then a drop kick to the back of the neck. Carrier trying to lift up the ladder. Fruity not allowing it to happen. And oh, stepping on, look at this, stepping on Peria's face. A little disrespectful if you ask me, but again, that's me. Trying to go for a fireman's carry, Peria ended up uh, stopping that one. Apple Pill sends Peria over the top, the levels are and down she goes. Apple Pill's going out after her, and well, no, she came back in for rare fruit. Because I knew that, I think Apple Pills had the same thought that I did. Why leave Fruity inside the ring with the ladder? And Fruity is going up the ladder right now. And she's got the belt in her hand. All she needs is enough time to get it down. And here comes Peria and Apple Pills after her. Striking her in the back. Apple Pills trying to push the ladder over. Peria giving her a hand. And there goes the ladder. Fruity is airborne. Electric chair drop. And Fruity may have figuratively been removed from this match after dropping from that height. Apple Pills doing a bit of taunting here. Nice clothesline. Another one. And oh, nice wheel kick. Apple Pills landing directly on top of the ladder, though, when she did that flying kick. Surprised she didn't hurt herself. And Peria throwing. Apple Pills onto the O. What is she doing? Suplex into the ring. And oh my God! Apple Pills, the back of her neck, landing right on the top of the ladder. I'm surprised she didn't break something. And now Peria making the climb. Up she goes. She's got a hold of her belt. All she's got to do is bring it down. And now Rare Fruit pushes the ladder out from under. And Peria turnabout's fair play. Nice electric chair drop. And now Fruity trying to steal it from Apple Pills, lays her out. Fruity has been relentless in this quest for that title. Again, we know that Rare Fruit is very greedy, and we know that she will stop at nothing to get the title. And look at this, Apple Pills already sees that Rare Fruit's got the title unhooked. Rare Fruit wins her very first Women's Hardcore Championship title, and finally, after so long, Peria finally dethroned. Rare Fruit is only the third recorded women's hardcore champion in XPWL history. Here is your winner and the new XPWL women's hardcore champion, Rare Fruit. What a match! What a hell of a ladder match! A Carpenter's Wet Dream match that was just absolutely beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall, and it is for the XPWL Super Heavyweight Championship. This is going to be awesome. Two huge men about to do battle for the Super Heavyweight title. I didn't expect to see this match, but we are getting it anyway. There he is. One of the men who recently made his return to the XPWL main roster after disappearing for so long, him and Ryuji Sauta. When they left as the lost sheep when they got arrested, this man has been gone for so long. When he rejoined the Steam Division, he was under a different name. He calls himself 
or at least he called himself Sherman Battle Tank. But since moving back to the main roster, he has reinvented himself and calls himself the War Machine. And tonight, he has a date with destiny. The War Machine takes on the walking battle tank for the XPWL Super Heavyweight title. And I can only imagine just how insane this match is going to be. size of these two men, I really hope the ring is reinforced because they're going to need it. Here we go. War Machine waiting for his opponent and here he comes. And by the looks of it, Hyenas decked him out with some new gear. Holy crap, he looks like a barbarian. The super heavyweight champion making his way down here, and he looks prepared for war. And how fitting, he's prepared for war against somebody who calls himself the War Machine, as him and Hyena make their way down the ringside here. Size of Tank and Tosh is already phenomenal enough. But again, you compare the two men and the size these two bring into this match. Like I said, I'm surprised the ring doesn't completely collapse under their weight. I really hope that the ring is prepared for these two because I don't think it is. Introducing the challenger from Little Rock, Arkansas. He is the former Blah Blah Black Sheep, and he is the number one contender for the XPW Super Heavyweight Championship, the War Machine. His opponent from the infected lands and being accompanied by the hyena. He's the walking battle tank and your reigning and defending XPWL Super Heavyweight Champion, Big Tank and Josh. This match is going to be hell from bell to bell and I can only imagine just how brutal this match is going to get with these two men I mean they faced each other before War Machine I believe had an opportunity not too long ago to face Big Tank Atosh in a non-title match but he came up short here we go the bell rings and both men run into each other like a, pa uh, like a couple of bulls Tankatosh holding on, body slams War Machine, kick to the back. Tankatosh using the strength to try to overpower War Machine, War Machine having none of it. This arm drag sending him over, grabbing War Machine by the hair and taking him over to the ropes. War Machine countering, getting himself out of that situation. Tosh picks up War Machine in a nice suplex slam. War Machine getting away from those stomps. Jawbreaker by Tank and Tosh and a clothesline and War Machine's out onto the sand. The referee beginning his count. And Tank and Tosh, what the hell is he doing on the top rope? 
Tankintosh off the top of an elbow, but War Machine gets out of the way. Nice hammer lock there. Oh, Tankintosh with an elbow to the side of War Machine's head. Both men running back into the ring. Hard slam by War Machine, and War Machine feeding shots to the walking battle tank. Setting his head up and a nice stomp to the side of the head. And, oh, look at this. Smashing Tankintosh's back. He is really, really bringing the fight to Tankintosh here. Tankintosh runs him over. Nice counter from the machine. Back on the offensive here. Kick to the face. And again, oh, look at this. Chin lock, and he's really tear, trying to tear at Tankintosh's face. I don't know what the hell the referee's looking at. He's supposed to be looking for a submission. How the hell are you supposed to see a submission when you're looking outside the ring and there's a spine buster by Tankintosh. Trying to go for a boss and crap, no luck on that one. War Machine was in the ropes, so there was no way in hell. And whoa, Tankintosh with that strength. Grabs War Machine by the leg and hurls him across the ring. War Machine with a headlock trying to wear the big guy down. And doing a bit of taunting here. War Machine ought to know better than to do any taunting when he's in the ring with Tankintosh. And he gets smashed with a shoulder tackle. Tankintosh up and over with a stomp and a kick to the head. Oh, War Machine with a nice back body drop. And oh, runs over Tankintosh with some axe handles. Nice picks him up, power slam, and look at that. The strength is real. War Machine picks up Tankintosh, and there's the river crossing. And Hyena trying to get, look at this. Hyena used to manage War Machine back when he was tank number seven. Hyena knows how to get War Machine's attention, and that's exactly what he did. Set himself up so that Tankintosh could grab him from behind. Tankintosh going for the pin. One, two, and only two. Tankintosh kicked out. Or, sorry, War Machine kicked out. Tankintosh going back on the offensive. Missed the kick there. War Machine tried to come at him from behind. He got clocked in the back of the head for his trouble. And there's a drop kick. Not very often you see Tankintosh leave his feet and do something like that. But nevertheless, every once in a while, a drop kick. And there's a back body drop. War Machine is really trying to take it to Tankintosh here. And Tankintosh might be in trouble. War Machine grabs a hold of Tankintosh. Look at the strength. Picks him up. Running power bomb. And Tankintosh, the back of his neck, landing on the ropes. And here we go again. Hyena distracting War Machine. Tankintosh from behind. Picks him up and drops him. Tankintosh now mauling War Machine. Drops him. And another hard spine buster. Tank it, oh my god, Tankintosh, look at this! Look at this! Picks up War Machine with absolutely no effort. Deadlift military press! It's over. There's no way in hell. War Machine dropped one. Two, oh, and War Machine kicks out at two. Tankintosh is a little surprised, he can't believe it. And why is he taunting? Tankintosh knows just as well that War Machine is not somebody to take lightly either. And just like I said, trips him up. Stomping to the back. Tankintosh, arm drag, right into the camp. And oh, another counter with a short arm clothesline. Tankintosh back body drop. And tries to grab War Machine. War Machine out wrestles him and gets out of that grapple. There's a nice clothesline. War Machine has had multiple attempts to go for the three count, but because of Hyena's meddling, he didn't really get the chance. And look at this, War Machine with a headlock on the big guy. Tankintosh is struggling here. Oh, stomp on the head again. And War Machine, another.
another chin lock, and he's really wrenching, pulling back on Tankatosh's face. Well, tried to get War Machine into a seated position. Bad idea. Woke him up. Oh, tried to go for a tackle. No luck there. Arm lock. Oh, going from behind. What the hell? Oh, look at this. Tankintosh trying a submission. He's got War Machine up in the torture rack. And War Machine tried to fight his way out of it, punching Tankintosh in the back of the head. Oh, another headlock attempt here, and he's got it. Cinching it in, and War Machine almost. Tankintosh pulls him off. And, oh, nice counter there. Shot. Another hard right hand. Off the ropes here. Tankintosh, big boot to the head. Trying to pick him up. Short arm clothesline again. And War Machine has brought him down. More taunting by War Machine. Again, I don't condone these actions. You should be focusing on winning the match, not taunting during it. Because it never seems to help. Oh God, take it, Taj. Choke slam. Tried to stomp, War Machine got out of it. And, oh, backbreaker. Tankintosh now dragging War Machine to the center of the ring. Oh my God, he's gonna do it again. Picks up War Machine, look at the strength on this. Another deadlift military press. Going for another cover here, the referee. One, two, no. It was not a three, the referee says it was only two. War Machine barely managing to get the shoulder up. Tankintosh going up to the top rope here, and oh, knee strike right to the chest. Hard uppercut to Tankintosh with a shoulder tackle. Arm drag takeover by Tankintosh. War Machine trying to, uh, trying to ramp things up for Tankintosh. Tankintosh trying to keep it slow. Oh, body slams him, and he got hooked in the ropes on the way down. Tankintosh tried to grab him, and again, War Machine taking his legs out from under him, kick to the head. And, oh, look at this. Haven't seen him do this in a while, the gator roll. War Machine locking in the chin lock after the gator roll. And, oh, tried to go for a right hand, Tankintosh with the counter. Irish whip off the ropes here, and no luck. War Machine now. Oh, catches Tankintosh and clocks him in the face. And there goes War Machine out of the ring after him. One. Two. But only two, of course. And oh, look at this. Going for pin. One. Two. No luck there. War Machine should have known better than to try for the cover without finishing him off. Still, you can't blame a guy for trying. Tankintosh grabbing him in the headlock in the center of the ring. Couldn't figure out what to do with him. Oh, shoulder tackle. And Tankintosh's neck bounced off the bottom rope there. And oh, War Machine stepping over top of Tankintosh, standing on his chest. And there's a chop to the chest and a clothesline. Oh, headbutt by Tankintosh, a boot by War Machine, and a DDT, and the canvas going for the cover again. One, two, nice follow through, but he didn't get the three count. You gotta figure, it's only a matter of time. I mean, Tankintosh has already hit two of his finishers on War Machine. If he hits him again, it's over, but War Machine now going on the aggression here, and he's doing pretty good for himself. Uh-oh, here we go. The river crossing again. And this 
time he tried to go for the cover, but David Tosh was in the ropes. War Machine grabbing Tankatosh by the head. Tankatosh chucks him over his shoulder. Back body drop by War Machine. And we got ourselves a grapple. Oh, headbutt! And he really clocked Tankatosh in the face hard with that one. Stomp to the arm. And War Machine, is he setting up here? Measuring Tankintosh. If he hits this, pump kick! Tankintosh is down. Is this it? One, two, three! I don't believe it! We have a new XPWL Super Heavyweight Champion, and his name is War Machine. Here is your winner and the new XPWL Super Heavyweight Champion, War Machine! And look at this show of respect between two warlords. Tank and Tosh actually accepting the loss and raising the hand of his competitor, the one that defeated him. What a show of sportsmanship. That being said, we're moving on to the Cruiserweight Championship match. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is a six-man prison yard riot match. And it is for the XPWL Cruiserweight Championship. Currently on his way to the ring from Juarez, Chihuahua, Mexico. He is the handsome devil, El Diablo. El Mosso. Diablo wants a chance at the Cruiserweight title. We've got ourselves a big prison yard riot match with the Cruiserweights tonight. That being said, We've got Diablo in the ring, who's next? Aha! And by the looks of it, we forgot the teleprompter again. Ladies and gentlemen, the next competitor from Japan and representing the Capcom Wrestling Association, he is the great Oni! A former Cruiserweight champion, he lost the title to Scarum. The one that's defending the title tonight, the great Oneen stepping into the prison yard riot match looking to regain what he lost. But he's got five other competitors to deal with, so that might prove to be difficult. That being said, I'm not really worried about that. One of the LWO members, I think, is on his way out here. Oh yeah, that's El, that's El Rey. I I I can't pronounce that. I don't know the title of that song. I'm very sorry. El Rey Yo or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm very 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 sorry that I'm butchering that. Ladies and gentlemen, the next participant in this match. He is from Mexico and he represents the Latino World Order, the LWO. He is El Bastardo Borracho! The drunken bastard is making his way into this ring. He's going to be a part of this match. He's got a chance at the Cruiserweight title. You gotta wonder if he even knows what the hell he's doing out there. The last time I saw him about a night ago, he was hanging out at the uh, he was hanging out at one of the beachside pubs when it was still open. Unfortunately, the beach and most of the stores in the area are closed. Our arena is only open because unfortunately we can't let any real people inside, but that's never stopped us before from having the house packed to the brim with digital fans. That being said, El Bastardo Borracho welcoming the crowd and giving them a little bit of a dance here. Here we go, who's next? Uh oh, the champion. Ladies 
and gentlemen, the next participant in this match. He is from Wood Oak City and represents the Syndicate. He is the current reigning and defending XPWL Cruiserweight Champion, the Yellow Signal, Scarra! Scarab is looking around the cage here. I don't think he's too thrilled about the fact that he's defending this title in a six-man match, much less a six-man prison yard riot match. Nevertheless, he's going to have to deal with it. Uh-oh. ourselves a black sun guard on his way out here the next participant representing the black sun guard this is Sar getting into the ring, his Cruiserweight Championship match. I don't think he's going to mind this match at all. A Prison Yard Riot match is more than likely nothing to a Black Sun guard. Considering the factor that he's decked out in that armor, he may not be wearing it in the match, but I'm pretty sure he's been through some rugged shit. I don't think a chain link cage is really going to damage him all that much. Oh, 
Oni and Diablo fighting outside the cage here. And Scarab's got a hold of Palacho. Little pistol starter hasn't moved for a while. I'm wondering if he's okay. He took a pretty nasty spill. Finally getting himself back up. I guess he's still too soon. He's going after Palacho. Lazar and Scarab are going at it inside the ring. Oni now pounding Diablo against the cage wall. In here, and Zar only getting a two on the champion. Here comes Oni into the ring. Woo! 
Pablo, the Scarab, and Zarbo are in the ring. Everybody else on the floor. Oni is laid out. Oh, super kick by Zar. And oh, look at this. Diablo Hermoso catching Zar out of nowhere. Tiger Bait drop kick. Measuring, trying to get Zar back to his feet. Up and overshot the jump. Completely missed. Diablo messed that up big time. And oh, nice close on There's Baracho and Oni. And Oni is going for the cover here. One, two, three. And I think Baracho was actually out cold. Oni has just captured the second XBWL Cruiserweight Championship. There's a nice shot of the shout out. Little pistol starter. Really did pretty decent in this match. And that's a horrible camera angle. There's a nice shot of the cheap shot, though, from Scarab. Here is your winner, and the new XPWL Cruiserweight Champion, the great Oni! Oni capturing his second XPWL Cruiserweight Championship just not too long after lose, uh, losing Gunlock, his compatriot, who has been barred from XBWL for using chems. Oni had no idea what he was going to do now that Gunlock was gone, but by the looks of it, being a champion is in the works. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the XBWL Tag Team Championship. Currently on their way to the ring. Making their in-ring return from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. They are Francois and Louis, the Ryujo Brothers. We didn't think we'd be seeing them back they finally come back to the XBWL and they're a sight for sore eyes. These two may be obnoxious, but on top of that, they were two of the best guys to get along with backstage. And by the looks of it, everybody's really thrilled that the Ryujo brothers are back in town and they've got a hell of an opportunity tonight. They are gonna knock off the XBWL Tag Team Champions, possibly. I mean, the first night back? I don't really see it, but you never know. You gotta wonder how much ring rust is on these two. But then again, I've known the Ryujos for a while and I know that they are finesse incarnated. If there's anything that they can do, they can wrestle. Their opponents from Mexico. They are the XPWL Tag Team Champions, the team of the Mexican mechanic of Suplex City, Pedro Munoz and El Bandito, the Latino World Order, LWO! You gotta wonder how this match is gonna go in the first place. Again, El Bandito and Pedro having absolutely no time to prepare for these opponents. Then again, Francois and Louis, they've been out of action for so long. And by the looks of it, yeah, the Ryujos eyeing Pedro and El Bandito from across the ring. They're aware of who Pedro is, but El Bandito not so much. 
So you got to wonder who is going to be the aggressor in this match. There you see the LWO getting a good look at their opponents here before the match starts. I believe the announcer took a little bit uh, more time than she needed to. And uh, she's not announcing them. I don't think we have to. We've already got an announcer that did that for us. The referee taking the tag team championship belts off of El Bandito and Pedro's shoulders. Here we go. This is it for the gold. And I'm not sure who we're starting out with. I think that's Francois and El Bandito starting this one. And immediately El Bandito going on the aggressive. Try to pick up, uh, try to pick up Francois. Francois with a nice fireman's carry. Tries to pick up Bandito again. Bandito with a counter again. Short arm clothesline. And going right after Francois' leg. Trying to take his knee out. Another hard shot by Francois right to the face. Bandito grabbing his arm. And like I said, there's got to be some ring rust here. Arm drag takeover. Francois not doing so well against El Bandito here in the early going. Francois with a shot to the head on El Bandito here. And he's immediately making the tag to his brother Louis who comes into the match and Bandito runs him over with a drop kick. And rolling neck snap. But El Bandito's barely broken a sweat here. Oh, back suplex and right into his own corner. Bandito now making his way back to his corner and tags in Pedro. Pedro with a stomp to the arm and a stomp to the other arm. And Pedro immediately trying to get the crowd on his side. Another stomp there. Trying to pick him up. No. We oh, pump kick taking Pedro off his feet. And oh, here we go. Hammer lock submission into an arm lock here. And look at Pedro. Oh, Pedro escapes the hole. And well, oh, tried for a either a drop kick or a hurried Karana. He did not, he did not get it. He got it that time though. And immediately Louis making a flying hot tag. Francois nails Pedro with a forearm and a pump kick. Pedro cuts off his steam there. And Louis, oh, Irish whip into the corner. Just the ref. Trying to go for something. Oh, grabbing a hold of Pedro's arm, and look at that. Wrapping it around the top rope and trying to pull it so it pulls out of socket. Nice forearm shot. Francois trying to go for the hair. No luck there. Pedro grabbing a hold of Francois by the hair now. Trying to take him back to his corner. Francois with a counter. Francois grabbing a hold of Pedro here. I thought he was going to go for the suplex powerbomb. Pedro with a counter. And grabbing Francois by the hair and still again trying to take him to his corner. Pedro and El Bandito trying to make sure that if they do anything with the Ryujos, they get him in their corner. Ryu and Francois has the same idea, but every single time he tries to get them in the corner, Pedro somehow manages to counter and back into the corner again. And Pedro runs Francois over. Three tags in El Bandito. Here we go again. Bandito now trying to figure out what to do. Grabbing a hold of him, stomped to the gut. Francois is finding himself in deeper and deeper trouble the further into this match we go. Hard uppercut. And Irish whip into the corner. There goes El Bandito. And El Bandito with a counter. And Irish whip back into his own corner. Playing ring around the rosy here again. Another Irish whip into the corner coming up. And this time the referee goes down. Now we're finally getting a double team move here from the Ryujos. Arm bar and, oh, axe handle. Francois trying to go for something there. Paint, oh, Bandito with a counter and another drop kick. 
And another rolling neck snap. Bandito now, what the hell is he doing? Oh, figure four leg, look at this, figure four leg lock right in his own corner. Louis trying to get himself out of there. Louis is in a lot of trouble. Whoa, what a shot, catching Bandito right in the head. Irish whip into the corner, here comes Louis with a kick, and Bandito swatted him away and he fell onto the mat. Uh-oh, Bandito, one suplex. Two suplexes, he's going for the three amigos here, no doubt, there's number three. Bandito now picking up Louis, Louis with a counter. Tried to stomp, Bandito got out of that. And up and, oh, backbreaker. And Louis now doing a bit of taunting here, not the best idea. And oh, look at this, going for a small package here. One. And oh, Louis into the corner and no. Bandito tried a heavy DDT and Louis countered it. Irish whip into the corner here again. We got another tag from the Ryujo brothers. And off the ropes here, double hip toss. Francois now doing some taunting, much like his brother. Again, I don't recommend this. Oh, jawbreaker by El Bandito and another running drop kick. Kick to the back of the head and another really next snap. And Bandito again wrapping up Francois' leg and trying to do some damage. Francois back to his feet, Bandito just leveling him with rights and lefts here. Francois finally getting an opening here, Irish whip into the corner. And again, Del Bandito, counter city. Not only that, he seems to be going back to the woodwork and that might cost him. And what the hell? Francois, exploder suplex and Bandito head first onto the mat after his body collided with the turnbuckles. Irish whip into the corner and El Bandito with a counter again. And this time, oh no. Oh, shot to the head. Bandito going outside the rail. No, 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 not this. Superplex outside. Oh my God, and Francois right into that beach sand. He didn't even bounce. He just went straight into it. Left a nice indentation of his body. Bandito might have just secured the win here. Francois trying to get out of this here. And Bandito again thrown into the corner. Francois trying to take advantage. And again, El Bandito counters. Bandito, by the looks of it, he's gonna try again. Oh, brain buster. And going right into the cover. One, two, and again, Francois kicks out. A little surprised Louis didn't try to get in the ring and break it up. Oh, look at this. Oh, back suplex. Francois holding on. German suplex. Turns Bandito around and a vertical suplex. Adjusts his head and stomps on it. Wow. Uh-oh. Oh, some kind of oh, some kind of triangle choke by Francois trying to choke out Bandito. Bandito trying to break it. Lifts him up. Power bomb. Not a very strong one, but still a power bomb. Bandito now going from behind here. Uh-oh, Tequila Sunrise. And whoa, look at that. Francois immediately gets out of it. And oh, flipping Bandito in the ear. Caught him with a forearm. Irish whip off the ropes. And a nice shot to the head. Bandito's been in this match the majority of the time. 
He doesn't seem to be losing too much steam. Francois, nice clothesline in the corner. Bandino trying to build up some momentum here. Off the ropes, er, drop kick. And again, Bandino now really feeling it. Trying to pick up Francois. Francois with a back body drop. Arm drag taken over by Bandino. Bandino is refusing to be shown up by Francois Ryujo. Is he going to try again? Oh, suplex into the corner. And holds on to it. He's going for a second one. Three amigos. This will be number six. Oh. And going straight into the cover. Here comes here comes Pedro. And here comes Louis. And Pedro not fast enough to stop Louis. And oh, Northern Light suplex by uh, by El Bandito. And Louis with a counter. Nice back body drop. And just getting out of the ring before the referee counts to five. Francois now trying to make it to his own corner. Bandito coming up behind him and taunting again. Francois with a kick to the head. And oh, going from behind again. Oh, suplex holding on. German. And here comes number three, the vertical suplex. Up and down. Francois trying to lift Bandito back up. Not sure what he's planning here. Power bomb, and he's holding it. One, two, oh, Pedro missed. Pedro went to break up the count, and he didn't, he undershot the jump. Louis cut him off. We have new XBWL Tag Team Champions. Look at some of this action here. Francois taking that spill on the floor. There's the suplex from the trifecta that he was doing. The Tequila Sunrise that didn't even hold on for a minute. And there's the three amigos, Bandito and Francois trading suplexes back and forth. Here are your winners and the new XBWL Tag Team Champions, Francois and Louis, the Ryujo Brothers. The LWO has finally been dethroned and it's by the Ryujos making their big triumphant return tonight. Congratulations are in order for the Ryujos as we move on to this next match coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the XPWL. Shooting Star Championship! Here we go. By the looks of it, somebody got a new theme. Comes the inverted protege herself. Again, big implications here. Paper Cut has a possibility of winning the Shooting Star Championship for a third time, which would be a record. She's already holding the record for uh, having the title the most amount of times with two championship reigns. If she makes it number three, it's going to be very difficult to beat that record at least for now. Nevertheless, here she comes. Paper Cut has a date with Destiny tonight. And Paper Cut, by the looks of it, is ready. She's been waiting for this opportunity all and I know for a factor that she is going to want to come at Hanako with everything she's got. You can only imagine how this is going to go. Here we go. And there's... 
just the shooting star champion right there. And she's making sure everybody sees it. The shooting star champion has really been gaining a lot of confidence ever since she won that title. She's gone into matches a lot more confident than she was originally. And I honestly think that if anybody is going to give Paper Cut a run for her money in this title match, it would obviously be the champion. Anico, this is her uh, this is her second championship ever in XPWL, and I know for a factor that Hanako is going to fight tooth and nail to keep it. Her and Paper Cut with a very similar style of battle. Introducing the challenger from the Realm of Shadows, this is the Inverted Paper Cut! Her opponent from Mobius, she is the Flying Puma and the reigning XPWL Shooting Star Champion. This is Hanako Farrell! And Hanako is saying, you're not taking this. Her and Paper Cut are going to tear it up for that championship. I can see it. The referee takes the title from Hanako as we get set for this next match. The title on display by the referee. Paper Cut is ready, staring a hole into Hanako across the ring. Hanako taking a look at her surroundings, the bell rings, and here we go. And immediately, Paper Cut resorting to a snap suplex to open things up. Hannah is going to have to be cunning. Paper Cut is just as cunning, if not, if not more so. Remember, a champion, a champion is not as hungry as the challenger. So that being said, Hanako's got to be very careful in this match. Hanako can only lose the title by pinfall or submission, but if she gets counted out or disqualified, there's no title change. That being said, though, I don't think Hanako would, would resort to trying to leave in the middle of a match. And by the looks of it, her and Paper Cut are hell-bent determined they are going to fight to the end here. And Paper Cut with a nice rear, rear naked shin lock. And Paper Cut stomping on Hanako's face. Hanako really laying into Paper Cut with some of these kicks, drop kicks, trying to kick her in the gut. Paper Cut got out of the way, spear by Hanako. And trying to grab her and put her in a submission hold here. Nice arm lock with the, with the knee firmly placed into Paper Cut's back. And Paper Cut can't seem to get loose. Hanako really wrenching in on it. And again, Paper Cut having a hard time getting out of it. Hanako let her out. Nice back elbow to the side of her head. And now striking Paper Cut right on the back. Paper Cut with a, oh, with a counter. And Hanako with a nice hurricanrana. Very nice camera work there. Trying to go for a slam. No, stun gun. Paper Cut is actually in trouble here. Hanako going for the pin. One. No, Paper Cut kicks out. Knee strike. Hanako stopping at nothing to try to take out Paper Cut. There's a heavy kick to the stomach and a leg drop. Paper Cut taking this match out to the floor. Backbreaker and Hanako right into the sand. Hannah trying to get back up. Paper Cut, the look on her face, that deranged smile. Remember, I'm not exactly sure what the Dark Omen and the Realm of Shadows power does to Paper Cut, but it certainly puts her in a lot more of an aggressive stance. Another club to the back by Hanako. 
grabbing Paper by the hair, trying to drag her over to the ropes. Paper cut with a counter. Some elbow strikes, breaking it up. And oh, back elbow by Hanako. Oh, nice power slam. Paper cut trying to assess the situation, see what she can do here. Nice clothesline. Another one. Paper waiting for it, taking momentum and using it to her advantage. Nice. Very nice power slam. Uh oh. Hangwoman's DDT. Paper cut trying to sit in the wind here. Hangwoman's DDT. Paper cut really laying it in. She should have went for the cover there. No luck. Tried to go for a clothesline. Hannah tried to counter. Oh, paper cut tried the paper cutter. It did not work. Crucifix holding. One, two. Paper cut kicks out. Paper cut coming within a hair's length of hitting the paper cutter and sealing the deal in this match. Nice standing drop kick. Hanako still battling paper cut here. Paper cut trying her damage to stay in this. Oh, boot to the stomach. Hanako flying moonsault. Paper cut barely had time to react, but not enough time. She got she got caught by that moonsault and almost cost her the match. Only a two count. And Hannah looking like she's gonna try to set paper cut up. Is she gonna go for the ace cutter? No, clothesline. Another one and a heel kick. Hanako picking paper cut back up. Paper cut breaks it. Uppercut. And oh, look at this, neck breaker. Paper cut going to the top rope here by the looks of it. Climbing the turnbuckle. And oh no, she's measuring Hanako here. What's she gonna do? Going to the top, off the top of the crossbody, and Hanako caught her in midair. Nice body slam. Paper cut made the mistake of going for the crossbody. Didn't count on Hanako being having enough ring awareness to go after her. Hammerlock scoop slam by Paper Cut. Oh, nice counter uppercut by Hanako. And Hanako, ace crusher! Potter with her finisher. And should have went for the cover there. I don't know why she didn't. Paper Cut, oh, elbow drop. Paper cut with a counter, trying to go in, nice, ha nice hammer lock for a takeover, and oh, snap DDT coming up, oh, paper cut goes down. Hanako and paper cut battling for this title, one, two, and again, paper cut kicks out. Hanako getting frustrated out here. Going to the top rope, possibly. Is she going to do what Paper Cut tried? No, off the top of the big splash. And Hanako trying to get the crowd going. I think Hanako senses victory. This might not be the best time to be assessing the situation. As I said, Paper Cut, nice lariat there, taking Hanako off her feet and going to the top rope here. What is she doing? Out on the floor here, off the top, crossbody, and oh, paper cut, chest first, right into the sand. Paper cut playing possum, though. I think the sand landing didn't hurt as much as we thought it would. We're up to three, and paper cut screaming at Hanako, get back in the ring. We're up to five. Paper cut should not have left Hanako out there. If she'd have gotten that 10 count on that, uh, on that, it would have been over. And oh, look at this. Again, Angleman's DDT coming up here. Drops Hanako. Paper cut is, paper cut is uh, slowly closing in on victory here. Pulling Hannah away from the ropes. One, two, and only two. Again, paper cut. Not able to secure the win here. Going out to the floor again. No, nope, up to the top rope. Is she gonna, yeah, she's gonna jump. Knee strike, but it did not connect. Paper cut caught with a stomp on the back of her leg. 
And now Hanico trying to take her to the corner and smashing Paper Cut's face into the turnbuckle. Paper Cut getting away from that stomp. Paper Cutter out of nowhere. And right into the cover, and that's it. It's over. One, two. No, Hanico kicked out of the Paper Cutter. That was completely out of nowhere. How the hell did Hanico kick out of that? I mean, nobody saw it coming. Paper cut caught her right out of nowhere. The champion still going in this one. You gotta figure, Hanako had to have been waiting for the paper cutter. She had to have been. And now, paper cut tied up in the ropes. Hanako is gonna try to finish this now. Flying Puma. If she hits this, it just might end it. But you never know. We thought it would be over with the paper cutter, and it wasn't. Maybe we'll get lucky. Paper cut eats the flying Puma drop kick. Hanako grabbing a hold of paper, taking her away from the ropes. Is this it? The referee. One, two, three. Hanako retains the Shooting Star Championship in what has got to be the hardest fought match of her career. Let's get some more of action with the replay. There's the hang of the DDT. I believe that was the first try. There's the first try at the paper cutter that did not connect. The ace crusher, very similar to the paper cutter. Hanako was really taken to the limit in this match. I am very, very impressed with both these ladies. They took each other to the limit. There's the paper cutter. We thought it was over right there. One, two, the ref's hand coming down for three, and Hanako just barely kicking out. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner, and still, XPWL Shooting Star Champion. Hanico Vera! Hanico with a hell of a victory over Paper Cut and well deserved. Those two took each other to the limit and beyond. Congratulations to Hanico and what a hell of a match! The following contest is scheduled for one fall, and it is for the XPWL International Championship. Another match has been highly anticipated. Here we go. The number one contender approaches. I know Texas has been looking forward to getting this match. And all I can say is, good luck to him. He's got to take on illustrious Eric Anderson. And this is going to be a hell of a match, considering the fact that the Texan is, uh, well, unfortunately, he is outweighed by Eric Anderson. Anderson built, as, built like a bodybuilder. 6'5", 275 pounds. Texas is going to have his work cut out for him in this match. Texan has a hell of a chance here to capture the XPWL International Championship. He's held the title before, but not the particular variation that Eric Anderson is holding. But I know for a factor that Texan wants that belt. Here we go. His opponent approaches. The illustrious one is making his entrance. And by the looks of it, Anderson's got himself a new, a new cape and some new tights. Actually, it looks pretty good in this new getup. Not bad. And he even 
got his cape decorated. I mean, look at that. That looks really good. The international champion coming out here in style. And I don't mean to say this, and I don't mean to be preaching, but I gotta tell you, when it comes to the international championship, Eric Anderson wearing that belt, he outshines them all. The man is a hell of a champion, and the belt looks damn good around his waist, but is it going to stay there? Remember, Texan Gamer 13 is no slouch, and he's also won and held the international championship before. So this is going to be a contest as to see whether or not, first of all, if Texan can take the onslaught from Eric Anderson being much stronger and being much bigger than Texan is. And the other question is, is regardless of whether or not he's stronger and bigger than Texan, can he stop Texan Gamer from taking the international title from him? Introducing the challenger. If you don't know where he's from, I suggest you buy a globe, you unintelligent piece of shit. He is the certified scout main and the number one contender for the XPWL International Championship. Texan Gamer 13. His opponent from San Francisco, California. He is the reigning and defending XPWL International Champion. He is illustrious Eric. And Anderson showing himself off here. Here we go, the international championship on the line. Eric handing over the belt to the referee. The ref showing it to Texan. Oh man, this is gonna be a hell of a contest for that belt. And that, again, that belt is just gorgeous. Here we go. And Anderson, again, I think he, I think uh, he was listening when I said Texan is no slouch. And there's a perfect example, catching him off guard with a clothesline in the back of the head and trying to take advantage with a pin. Not happy about that. Texan takes his leg out from under him. Kick to the head. Texan's got a hell of a lot on his plate to deal with here. Anderson really overpowering him here. Texan, oh, nice arm drag takeover. Grabbing Anderson by the hair, taking him to the turnbuckle. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And Anderson drops like a rock. Kind of overshot the count there. Sorry about that. Oh. Legs taken out from under Texan. And Anderson now going on the attack. Going after Texan's back. Hanging him on the ropes. The referee almost got nailed by Texan there. And oh. Jawbreaker. And a clothesline and no punch. Anderson with a chop across the chest from Texan. And Texan with a nice hurricane runner into a pin. One, only one. Anderson able to force his way out. Ooh, stomped to the head. And Texan missed the drop kick. Anderson trying to clothesline. Texan countered. And oh, nice clothesline. Anderson again does not go down. Texan having to rethink his strategy, wailing on Anderson's head. Another 10 count, and Anderson drops. Anderson grabbing a hold. Oh, butterfly suplex, and he's holding it. One, only a one count. To be honest with you, I don't even know if you could actually consider that a real pin. If I didn't know better, I saw Texan's shoulders off the mat. Oh, there's another clothesline to the back of Eric's head. Texan grabbing a hold of Anderson, and oh my God, look at that, deadlift power bomb. Takes a lot of strength to slam somebody bigger than you. Texan going up to the top rope, measuring Anderson. What is he gonna do here? Eric back on his feet. Here comes Texan. 
And Texan powerbomb for his trouble, and his shoulder got caught in the ropes. Both men now out on the floor. Anderson drop kicked up against the apron. And oh, tried for a cutter on the floor. That didn't work. And Anderson pounding on Texan. Grabs a hold of him and oh, face first into the barricade. Unforgiving steal. Again, we are coming to you live in Sable Beach Amusements. Or at least what it or at least it used to be in Sable Beach Amusements before they tore it down. It's a vacant lot. So our digital uh, our digital arena and our digital fans are more than happy to be sitting here with you guys today as we bring this event to you. And Anderson with a double A spine buster on the sand outside the ring. We talked to Anderson earlier today. He said that after he defeats Texas Gamer 13, he's going to wear a Speedo and the International Championship, and he's going to go down to Sabo Beach and show himself off to the ladies. I don't think anybody told Anderson that the uh, beach is pretty much empty at this point because uh, Sabo Beach, because of the COVID-19 pandemic problems we've been having, uh, the beach has been shut down because of too many people ruining it for everybody else because they couldn't be bothered to listen to the social distance rules. Barbecuing, drinking, and being on the beach when they were told not to. Thanks a lot, tourists. Texan Gamer with a hard clothesline. Anderson caught Texan with that wind-up punch, that right hand, and there's the scatter gun from Texan. Anderson hit that hit that fist earlier, but it didn't really do much. Texan is still wide awake. And Texan doing some taunting here. I don't know how many times I've had to say this to other people, but you shouldn't taunt if you think you've got the victory. And we almost had a three there. Anderson did kick out. And look at Texan arguing with the referee. Texan with a clothesline. And pick, oh, atomic drop. And low blow, roll through into a drop kick. Texans on a roll here. Thought, went for a super kick. Anderson countered. Forearm shot. Texan got out of the way. Body blow. Anderson picks up. Oh, Texan and Texan face first into the turnbuckle. He left. Off the ropes. Oh, tornado DDT springboard. Very nice move by Texan Gamer 13. Irish whip into the corner, eats the turnbuckle. Anderson going for a chop. Ooh, Texan answers back with one of his own. Anderson overpowering Texan, forcing him to the mat. Went to kick him in the head. And, oh, what a knee lift by Texan out of nowhere. And Texan, Irish whip off the ropes. Pop up, power bomb. One, two. And Anderson kicked out, and Texan can't believe it. Texan thought he had it. He's going to try to finish it right here. Is it the super kick? No. Scatter gun. Is Anderson truly done? One, two, three. Texan Gamer has won. He's won the international championship. And I don't mean to discredit this, but I'm just going to say this because by the looks of it, I think Anderson's hand was under the bottom rope. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner and new XPWL International Champion, Jackson Gamer 13. And Anderson looks pretty upset. He's walking away from the ring. He looks furious. Honestly, I think, I think Anderson had his hand underneath the bottom rope. I honestly think it, but the referee didn't see it. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the XPWL World Heavyweight Championship. Oh boy, here we go. The World Championship on the line. A hell of an opportunity has been given to Robro Man. This will be his first legitimate buy for the title in almost six months. 
Rob getting the opportunity, management approaching him back stage a couple of weeks ago, telling him that he had a secret, that he was the secret opponent for Junior Dragons XPWL World Title tonight. And again, I spoke to Rob earlier today. He's excited. He is absolutely elated that they awarded him this opportunity. And Rob has told me that he will not let management down in making the decision to let him have a crack at the world crown. Robo Man has been a XPWL Tag Team Champion. He's been an XPWL International Champion. He has also been an XPWL Super Heavyweight Champion. Rob only needs one more championship and he will be crowned the second ever XPWL Grand Slam Champion. Rob has a lot riding on this match. It's a hell of an opportunity, and I believe management saw this opportunity for Rob and could not pass this up. Robro Man getting the shot at the world crown. And what stands in his way is the champion. Speaking of the devil, here he comes. By the looks of it, Junior Dragon sporting some oh, sporting some old writing that he had on his arm back when he wore his mask, and some and a new attire. By the looks of it, he's got a glittery purple shirt, and uh, well, his tights look new. So do his boots. Not bad. Junior Dragon, very prideful and very, very prideful world champion. And when he found out about this championship match being against Robro Man, Junior Dragon said he couldn't be happier. He's got a hell of an opportunity as Rob to become a Grand Slam champion. Junior Dragon says all the more power to him for wanting to be a Grand Slam champion. But if he's got to go through Junior Dragon, Junior Dragon's already predicted that there is no way in hell that Junior Dragon's going to lose his championship. Junior Dragon making his way into this match. Very confident and again a proud world heavyweight champion. Junior Dragon has no hard feelings with Robro Man, but when it comes to the championship on the line, friendships and all deals are off. The only thing that matters is the richest prize in the XPWL, and Junior Dragon has it, and Rob wants it. a shot of that beautiful championship belt. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the challenger from another time. This is the prototype Terminator, Robro Man. His opponent from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. He is the current reigning and defending XPWL World Heavyweight Champion. The Ultimo Hatchling, Junior Dragon! Again, Junior Dragon, very proud, very, very prideful world champion. Puts the title back up on his shoulder, but he's going to be handing it over to the referee. This is going to be a hell of a match. World Championship on the line. One of only two main events on this card. And the last match before the Realm of Shadows match. This is going to be insane. Rob, of course, a lot bigger than Junior Dragon. Junior Dragon... Not very, uh, not very big, about six foot two, and obviously going to have a problem trying to take Robo Man on by force. Sidewalk slam by Rob. Rob outweighing him, 
at seven foot four and 640 pounds. That's about the maximum weight that his body is allowed to be. His battle body adjusted by uh, Magic backstage. Again, if he weighed his normal weight, he, they would never be able to move him, let alone actually do anything to him. And Junior Dragon now trying to mount some offense on the big guy. Oh, nice back elbow. Rob hits the floor. Rob, oh, short arm clothesline. Junior Dragon getting some innovative moves in, but Rob not going to let him just get away with it. Oh, kick to the back. Junior Dragon trying to go for the face and got an elbow for his trouble. Neck breaker by Rob. And Junior Dragon, oh, knee drop right on the face and a stomp. Rob choking the world champion here. Junior Dragon is in trouble. Try to go for a neck breaker. Junior Dragon with a nice counter and a DDT. Right into the cover. The referee not paying attention again. One. Rob getting out of the ring to take a breather. And oh, hangs up Junior Dragon on the ropes. Grabs a hold of him, picks him up. And stun gun, Junior Dragon a long way down from the top. Oh, nice short arm clothesline taking Rob off his feet. Junior Dragon showing that he's not completely helpless here. And oh, knee to the back. And a stomp on the back. Junior Dragon now choking Rob. A little bit of payback for what happened earlier there. And, oh, again, Junior Dragon screaming, come on, you son of a bitch. And Rob, I don't think he took too kindly to that. Nice arm wrench. Takes it right over. And, oh, hard shot right to Junior Dragon's temple. Rob going for a cover here. One. And, oh, Junior Dragon kicks out immediately. Went for a kick and misses Junior Dragon a little too fast. Oh, Paul Nelson face buster. And Rob is bleeding from the face. I believe that's uh, it's synthetic blood, whatever, whatever the hell it is, I think. Junior Dragon now. Oh, look at this. Trying to get Rob's attention, gets him up onto his feet. Missile drop kick connects. And Junior Dragon springboard lion salt. And right into the cover, one, two. Rob kicks out at two, Junior Dragon so close. He could have had the win right there. Oh, shoulder block. Rob picks him up, went for a right hand. Junior Dragon answers back with one of his own. And oh, Rob almost dumps him over the top of the floor. What the hell, Rob going out after him. Junior Dragon caught in the DDT position and right into the apron of the ring. Rob wants that title, he's not screwing around. Junior Dragon has managed to hold on to the title this long. Oh, another face buster. Doing a bit of posing, I don't know if I would agree to, that that would be a good idea. Not sure what the hell Junior Dragon's doing here. Off the top of the nice lion salt. And into the cover again, one. Give Junior Dragon credit. He Realizes he's out strength and he's outweighed. So the best course of action is to go for whatever he can and score pinfalls whenever possible. Junior Dragon with an Irish whip into the corner. And oh, clothesline. Oh, Bulldog. Nice Bulldog by Junior Dragon here. Trying to pick Rob back up. Rob breaks it and a nice uppercut. And oh, Junior Dragon not allowing him to take advantage. Nice forearm shot. And Rob with a back body drop, taking Junior Dragon down. Oh, hard shot to the head. Fireman's carry by Junior Dragon. Nice counter. And Irish whip into the corner. And a drop kick. Rob is in trouble. Junior Dragon back on the offense. And never mind. Just got caught in the head with an elbow. And front suplex. And Rob roaring out in rage. Grabbing a hold of him. Uh, grabbing a hold of him. Going for the cover here. Here comes the ref. One. Only one. 
Rob should have tried something else before going for the cover, but that's okay. Junior Dragon, oh, kick to the leg. And oh, Rob with that same leg just kicked Junior Dragon right in the chest, letting him know that didn't do nothing. And Rob forcing Junior Dragon right into the post. Alley-oop. Oh, out of the corner. Junior Dragon finding himself in trouble. Ooh, kicks Rob off of him. And Junior Dragon, oh, look at this. Power bomb! You gotta be kidding, holding on to a deadlift power bomb again! Holy shit! Junior Dragon with amazing strength, triple power bomb! Going for the cover here, the ref out of position again. One, two, and Rob kicked out almost three. Junior Dragon can't believe it. Junior Dragon going to the second rope here. Trying to get Rob back to his feet. What's he going to do? Off the rope with a nice uppercut. Going for the cover again. One, two, and Rob kicks out at two. Honestly, I think that uppercut might have woken Rob up there. And choking him again. Junior Dragon resorting to whatever he can to hold on to the world title. Dragon with a rear naked chin lock, trying to keep Rob from mounting offense, and Rob with a heavy back body drop again. Junior Dragon finding himself in trouble. Oh, what a shot to the head. And Rob with a back suplex. Junior Dragon's having a very rough time here. Neck breaker, no, Junior Dragon counters. Trying to go for a Russian leg sweep and catches it. And Junior Dragon stomping on the arm. Rob is in deep trouble here. Oh, what a kick to the knee there. And, oh, Junior Dragon's going to try a power bomb again. Lifts him up. Power bomb. Deadlift power bomb. And number three, again, you gotta you gotta respect the strength Junior Dragon is showing in this match. Two two times he has executed a triple power bomb on a 640 pound machine that outweighs him by at least 300 pounds. Maybe even, uh, maybe even more, 300, maybe 400 pounds, because I think, uh, I think, I think that Junior Dragon's only 240 pounds on his own. And Rob is just leveling the hell out of him with those strikes. Junior Dragon may have busted open Robo Man, but I think he awakened a sleeping giant. Another uppercut off the second rope. Going for the cover again. One, two, and again Rob kicks out. And Junior Dragon now contesting the count. Going for the arm again. Junior Dragon with a rear naked show up, a chin lock again. Holding on for dear life here. Body drop and again the shoulder tackle from Junior Dragon. Rob grabbing the ropes and pulling himself back up. Junior Dragon tried to cross body, that didn't work. Back elbow and an elbow of his own, and Rob with a body blow catching Junior Dragon right into the ribs. Try to go for a boot. Dragon screw leg whip by Junior Dragon. Oh, God, he's going to try again. Power bomb. Deadlift. That's oh. nine power bombs. Nine. Nine power bombs. One, two, and again, Rob kicks out. Junior Dragon can't believe it. 
trying to figure out what to do here. Rob back to his feet. Next breaker. Rob now. Uh oh. Inverted full Nelson. And drops Junior Dragon. Makes the cover. One, two. And Junior Dragon manages to kick out. Barely, but he does kick out. What the hell is Rob thinking? Going to the top rope here. Junior Dragon trying to get away. Oh. Elbow drop misses. And Junior Dragon tried to go for something and it didn't work. Rob countered. Nice running neck breaker again. Rob trying to figure out what to do. Junior Dragon takes his feet out from under him. Takes him toward the center of the ring. What the hell is he doing? Going to the second rope. Is he going to try that uppercut again? He's tried it at least three times already. There's... Well, that time Rob actually got out of the way. Rob runs him over with a heavy lariat. Tries to get Junior Dragon back to his feet. Uh-oh, again, inverted full Nelson. And Rob holding the pin. One, two, and again Junior Dragon manages to kick out. And Rob going for the leg and just drops right onto Junior Dragon's knee. And I think he's daring him to get up. Rob might be making a mistake here, letting the world champion have a breather, but maybe not. Junior Dragon is caught here. Uh-oh. Package pile driver. Oh. oh. Junior Dragon might be done right now. Going for the pin. Ref, what the hell? One, two, and still only two. The referee really really stupid in this match did a complete 360 didn't even bother trying to make the count until like he made that complete turn and Rob is going to give him another one this might be it for Junior Dragon two package pile drivers in a row going for the cover one two three we've got ourselves a new world champion in the second XPWL Grand Slam champion in history Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner and the new XPWL World Champion and the second XPWL Grand Slam Champion, Rob Roman! And look at the display of sportsmanship, Junior Dragon accepting his defeat and awarding the champion his just dues. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is the main event of the evening, and it is the Realm of Shadows match for the XPWL Women's Championship! Oh God, here we go. <laughs> We go. The reality warping she devil is the one that issued the challenge, and here she comes, the challenger for the XBWL Women's Championship. Two months ago, an absolute overload, Scalon practically dominated her and broke her mind. We've come full circle, Twyla Meta making her return to Sable Beach Slam Fest this time. The fan favorite going into this match to take on the nether boy queen, Skalon. While Ameta is rearing to go here, and I know for a factor that she is looking forward to this. That being said, oh boy, here we go. The champion making her way down here to the ring. going to be horrifying if this is anything like absolute overload. I'm very concerned about what we're going to see here. Again, let me break it down for you. The Realm of Shadows match has no rules. Anything goes. This match for the championship is unsanctioned. There could be a death in this match. I don't, I 
don't think that they would actually allow a death in the ring. And if that does happen, I'm pretty sure that whoever comes out the champion, if they killed somebody, they're more than likely going to be stripped of the title and probably fired. That being said, I don't think it matters. Stallone making her way down here, and the look on her face says it all. The Realm of Shadows match has been the focal point in her mind for the last four weeks. And I think that she's becoming a little intimidated by what she is about to step into. Again, Skalan has no idea what to expect in a Realm of Shadows match, but she, that grin on her face got a lot bigger once she found out that this match is literally anything goes, and it is unsanctioned, which means XPWL is not responsible for the health and well-being of these two competitors in this match. They wanted it this way. This is their match. We are not going to have anybody hurt or broken on our watch. This is why we're not sanctioning this match. Ladies and gentlemen, I can only imagine just how brutal this is going to be. Twyla Meta and Skalan, round two in the Realm of Shadows match. Introducing the challenger from the Realm of Shadows. She is the reality warping she-devil, Twyla Meta! Her opponent from the Nether Void. She is the reigning and defending XPWL Women's Champion and the Nether Void Queen. This is Skylar! Skalan looking out at the crowd with disdain. Again, this match, she has no idea what she's about to get herself into. And quite frankly, I don't think any of us know what the hell she's getting into. Here we go, title on the line. Twyla Meta looks ready, and Skalan... I, what, what, what the hell just happened? What, what the hell happened to our video feed there? Something happened. And, well, here we go. The early going of the match. Twyla Meta immediately going after Skalan. Aggressive superplex back into the ring after throwing her out on the apron. I I'm still trying to figure out what the hell happened to our video feed there. That shouldn't have happened at all. Twyla Meta taking this out to the floor. Remember, anything goes. Twyla Meta. Oh. Kick to the gut. What the hell is she doing? Picks up Skalan. And, oh, look at this. Carrying her a bit. Oh, sit up. Powerbomb on the sand. We knew what these two were going to end up wanting to do to each other. And by the looks of it, Twyla Meta has some very specific things in mind. Oh, Skalan with a nice counter. And, oh, shot right to the top of Twyla Meta's head. Twyla Meta with a, oh, nice dragon screw. Skalan. Not having an easy time here. Twyla Meta this time around has been watching Skalan compete, I bet. <laughs> Float over deep. What the hell? What the hell keeps going on with our video feed? Something's gotta be wrong. I I I I I wanna call them I, I wanna call the video truck. There's gotta be something wrong here. Guys, like, can you please try to fix the feed? This should not be happening. Skalan right into the barricade. We can't lose our feed here. Not now. If we lose the feed here, there's going to be a lot of unhappy people that wanted to see this match. We cannot afford to lose it. And Skalan and Twyla Meta still going at it here. Twyla Meta capturing Skalan up against the barricade and just pounding her here. That video feed, the video, the disturbance, I, I, I... I don't know what the hell is going on. Our video trucks never had this problem when we were in Sable Beach last year. Skalan and... Oh, wow. What the hell? Skalan and Twyla Meta are still leveling the hell out of each other. And oh my god, Skalan smashing Twyla Meta face first into the post. Trying to go for a strike. Twyla Meta with a strike back. Snap mare and an elbow to the top of her head. Guys... Guys in the video truck, if you're seeing what I'm seeing on the, my monitor, you guys need to fix this. If we lose the feed, like, 
if we lose the feed, so many people are going to be pissed off, including the owners. Like, I really hope you guys value your jobs. There's a kick to the gut. Twala Mena, oh, another shot right to the back of her head. And now Scalon, much more aggressive. Oh, what a shot. Twala Mena now taking Scalon towards the aisleway here. Irish whip right onto the sand. By the looks of it, they're working towards the ramp. Right there is where the parking lot for the Sobble Beach Amusements was. Twyla Mehta trying to egg Scalon on. There's a clothesline. Twyla Mehta smashed into the concrete floor in that wooden deck. As you can see, our uh, special LED display on the screen is showing what? What the hell was that? Again, the video feed is just going crazy. And what the hell is that? Some kind of weird thing on the screen? It's, okay, come on, guys. The joke's over. Stop screwing with the video feed. Twyla Meta taking Scalon up the aisleway here. Are we going to fight on the stage? Or are we going to get more than that? Twyla Meta. Oh, I can't see anything. Nice insiguri there by Scalon. Unfortunately, our camera crew is capturing a lot of the uh, the steel pillars at the, at, 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 in the arena. And what the hell, Twyla Meta? That's solid. That's solid wood. Twyla Meta takes a walk and a sit-out powerbomb on the wood dock. The stage. Twyla Meta taunting. Scalon took a pretty heavy fall onto that thing. Oh, Scalon, arm breaker. Scalon now trying to mount an offense. Twyla Meta not allowing it. Irish whipping her away. Trying to get involved, try to kick to the head. That didn't work. Oh, hard shot to the face. And a kick to the head. Twyla Meta, I think we I think we finally got the video feed fixed. Twyla Meta and Scalon still battling up there on the aisleway. And what the hell is Twyla Meta trying to do here? Irish whip into the into the stage and an axe handle. Twyla Meta pounding on Scalon here. Scalon going for some offense here, trying to strike. What the? We're losing video. What? Better up. <laughs> you. <laughs> You know what? You're not scary. You are mine. Awake at last. <laughs> Scream. to my nightmare. <laughs> you need your ugly sleep. Feel this. I don't think so.
started. <laughs> Shame! I remember when you were scared of the dark. <laughs> You caught me! <laughs> the terror is unleashed! <laughs> Tempt my blade, why don't you? Demon's rage is stronger than death. Why would you think I'd bow to you? Let's bear your soul, shall we? <laughs> and I, I don't think anybody else could be quite happy with you. Whoa, what the hell is this? What happened to the lights? Uh, and, whoa, whoa, who the hell is that? What the hell is that? What is that? Like? <laughs> Your remains! Uh, to get some vengeance or what the hell's good? Paper cut. Paper cut, turn around! What? Turn around! Uh, what the hell that's gonna come uh, Abigail! Oh my god, is she ever angry? Paper cut! I'm the one that's gonna run this show now! Uh, this is scheduled for one fall. Wait a minute, what the hell is that? Uh, Look behind! Uh, Whoa! That woman again! Oh my god! Pathetic well. You had no place here. What the hell just happened out there? Well, I'm at it tonight. Skalon has defeated Qualameda. This is a dark day. He has captured the XBW women's title. What's wrong? Sweet dreams, oh Queen of Pain. Now your nightmare lasts forever. <laughs> <laughs>